Very high spirits. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. That cannot be seen. <laughs> yeah. Assalamualaikum Profesor Abdul Wahmi. Ye kaun hai? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ye hai maam. Okay, acha. Okay, great, great to see you and I find you um, in a very good mood, very great, good. Uh, and <laughs> and that's expected also. Now this is a very big event. Inshallah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This can be a turning point for the world. Yeah, yeah, you are right. And turning for, point, yes. Words, good. <laughs> a better man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. How is the weather in Delhi now? Yeah, at least, you know, uh, uh, first three uh, alphabets are same. India and Indonesia. So, <laughs> so it's you know we can together work and bring many good things to the world. At yeah. Least, and you know prosperity and togetherness uh, that will be yeah. very good. Uh, the name the name of currency also the same. Rupiah, rupee. Uh, Yes, yes, but uh, your our rupiah is you. You are in kharabs. <laughs> uh, one thing is there when we get uh, some money in pocket and reach Jakarta, uh -huh. then, then it is counted in uh, you know so many uh, Arab so many Arabs, uh, uh, so uh, many zero, yeah. So you are multiplying so many zeros. You are putting. <laughs> That's your that means uh, that means when you come to Jakarta, you will become milliarder, millionaire, right? No, there was uh, one good thing. Uh, uh, I purchased something for uh, uh, hundred rupees. Mm. So then uh, I am telling I purchased it for uh, hundred lakhs, one crore. Uh, uh. I don't tell them this is in in Jakarta, no. <laughs> My shirt cost is uh, hundred thousand rupees, no? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so we we can uh, multiply for good, for betterment, for happiness of the world, for yeah. humanity. Yes. yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. 
डॉक्टर अनवर इब्राहिम सलाम आई वेलकम यू ऑन आई एस एंड डॉक्टर मंजूर आलम एंड एंड द टीम हाउस मंजूर एक्सलेंसी No, How are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we don't have a farmers uh, a revolt here, so we are quite okay for now. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's How's great. Your yeah. How's your health? Okay. Health is okay. Alhamdulillah. By the grace of Almighty Allah, in barakah of those of friends. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay, I think let us adhere to time, and uh, inshallah, uh, we'll have success also. So here is uh, the beginning of two-day online international conference on personality and contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir as a national and international thought leader in 20th century. To begin with, I would request Maulana Athar Hussain Nadwi Sahab. to please recite some verses from the holy quran maulana athar hussain nadwi assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا ولما رأى المؤمنون الأحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم إلا إيمانا وتسليما من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهد الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين ان شاء او يتوب عليهم ان الله كان غفورا رحيما در حقیقت تم لوگوں کے لیے اللہ کے رسول میں ایک بہترین نمونہ ہے ہر اس شخص کے لیے جو اللہ اور یوم آخرت کا امیدوار ہو اور کثرت سے اللہ کو یاد کرے اور سچے مومنوں کا حال اس وقت یہ تھا کہ جب انہوں نے حملہ اور لشکروں کو دیکھا تو پکار اٹھے کہ یہ وہی چیز ہے جس کا اللہ اور اس کے رسول نے ہم سے وعدہ کیا تھا اللہ اور اس کے رسول کی بات بالکل سچی تھی اس واقعے نے ان کے ایمان اور ان کی سپردگی کو اور زیادہ بڑھا دیا ایمان لانے والوں میں ایسے لوگ موجود ہیں جنہوں نے اللہ سے کیے ہوئے عہد کو سچ کر دکھایا ان میں سے کوئی اپنی نظر پوری کر چکا اور کوئی وقت آنے کا منتظر ہے انہوں نے اپنے رویے میں کوئی تبدیلی نہیں کی یہ سب کچھ اس لیے ہوا تاکہ اللہ سچوں کو ان کی سچائی کی جزا دے اور منافقوں کو چاہے تو سزا دے اور چاہے تو ان کی توبہ قبول کرے بے شک اللہ غفور الرحیم ہے صدق اللہ العظیم جزاک اللہ مولانا اتھر حسین آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو سی ان ٹو لائنس دی کانسیپٹ دا میننگ دیٹ دیز ورسز انڈیکیٹ دیٹ دا بیسٹ آف دا ماڈلز فار ہیومن گائیڈنس از ان رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ دیر ہیو بین پیپل ہو فالوڈ اٹ اینڈ دے گاڈ سکسیز اینڈ دیر آر انفارچونیٹ پیپل ہو آر ناٹ گیٹنگ اٹ اینڈ فار دیم دیر از ٹرمائل 
So best is that we adhere to that uswe hasana, that model behavior, and get success in our life. Then uh, I would say that now we have, we come to the welcome and introduction part of this. And for that, we have with us Professor Zed M. Khan, Secretary General of the Institute of Objective Studies, and Dr. Henry Tan Jung, Vice Director, Postgraduate School, Ibn Khaldun University, Indonesia. So first I would request Professor Zed M. Khan to please give your welcome address. Professor Zadam Khan. Unmute. Unmute. Am I audible? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmadu nusalli ala Rasulah al-Karim. My brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity, <clears throat> I take it as a matter of great privilege for me and for the Institute of Objective Studies to participate in this very important function that we are holding. This is to remember the son of Islam and the son of whole humanity who has contributed to the welfare of humanity in, and in creating a human society. <clears throat> This welcome <clears throat> includes all kinds of sentiments that the people of Institute of Objective Studies have for all those who are participating in it and who will be participating in it because the whole proceeding is being recorded and it will definitely be repeated again and again in the coming days. <clears throat> Let me introduce a bit the Institute of Objective Studies as well. You know, it's a non-political, non-profit making organization. And it is actually <clears throat> busy in many, many things. And the quantum and the scope of activities of IOS has been increasing. And you know, apart from that, the Institute is receiving a lot of suggestions from various quarters of Indian society and from outside India as well to take up new projects and to take up new issues. We are trying our level best to cover all of them so, the human resource and the financial resources are limited. So we are trying to cover as much area as we can. <clears throat> In view of expanding the scope of our activity, we people are trying to have got new policies and methods. For instance, we have adopted a method of starting our activities in collaboration with other universities and research organizations. And that has given us a boost in terms of thinking new areas and taking up new projects in collaboration. The main area of emphasis for Institute of Objective Studies is its research area. Research we have got of two kinds. One is that we sponsor research and we try to select scholars who conduct that research. Number two, the scholars all around submit their applications and submit their research proposals and the Institute after a proper scrutiny sanctions those projects and the people carry it out. Second important area is publication. <clears throat> publication is a big area for us and we have got our own arrangements of publication. So publication is done by us, distribution is also done by us. 
Along with it, we have got a section of translation. English, Arabic, Urdu, Hindi, these are prominent languages in which we are trying to have got translations of important books. Apart from that, now we are trying to translate our things in Indian languages, Indian constitutional languages as well, so that our reach increases. Apart from that, we also conduct surveys. For instance, the latest survey we have conducted is to know the attitude and priorities and choice of the young citizens of India who participate in elections as to what are their areas of preference and what are their important points which they consider at the time of casting their vote. Apart from that, the big area that we cover is the conferences of all kinds, including the local conferences, the national conferences, and international conferences. And I think Institute of Objective has got a very impressive prestige and very impressive record of performance in this area. Apart from that, we also have got limited scholarships for those who are pursuing <clears throat> those themes which are explained in our con compendium of research that we have published. These themes are actually approved by the Institute of Objective Studies and those people who take up these themes, we have got a special concern and a special uh, you know, favor for them. Apart from that, we have got very impressive lecture series on topical themes and special lectures are organized every now and then like in the present series, we have got Ibn Khaldun series of lectures and we are having it in, at various centers because the Institute has got five chapters also, which are scattered all over India, like that of in Aligarh, in Patna, in Calicut, in Chennai, in Kolkata, and headquarters in Delhi. Apart from that, we have got awards also, like that we have got a Lifetime Achievement Award, Shavalyulla Award also is there with us. We also have got regular publications, like that of uh, Journal of Objective Studies, Religion and Law Review, Mutalia, that is in Urdu quarterly, a newsletter that again, Nukta Nazar, that is in Urdu, a minaret, it is an online magazine, and this this kind of I mean, this kind of publications are very normal and regular. Apart from that, we have got a research team that works very <clears throat> genuinely on preparing annual calendar of Institute of Objective Studies, and that is also distributed. Because it is research data is given in this calendar, so it is highly popular inside and outside India. Apart from that, we have got a full-fledged library, and that library caters to scholars of, 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 of all universities, which are specifically located in Delhi. So this is the brief that I wanted to uh, present before you about the latest activities of Institute of Objective Studies. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jazakallah, Professor Zadam Khan. Uh, now we have Brother Dr. Henry Tan Jung with us. He is Vice Director, Postgraduate School of Khaldun University, Indonesia. I request him to give a uh, welcome and introduction from his side. Thank you. Dr. Henry Tan Jung. Thank you, Professor Wani. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, good morning to everyone here. And thank you for joining us 
in our today's conference of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, 2021. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this conference, introducing you to the speakers and attendees who are coming from all over the world today to share knowledge and increase our thinking horizons about Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Today's conference was intended by around 300 participants from more than 30 universities across the continent and 100 institutions across Indonesia, making this conference truly an international conference. The theme of this conference is personality and contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir as a national and international thought leader in 20th century. We have experts from various fields who will stay with us for the next two days, sharing their thoughts, knowledge, and opinions with the rest of us. The major outcomes that we expect from this conference is a recognition to the contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and Islamic leader, nationally and internationally. We will also be talking about the personality of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and as an Islamic leader, which can be exemplified as an example to all leaders today. This conference was held by the Institute of Objective Studies, India, Ibn Khaldun University, Bogor, Indonesia, International Institute of Islamic Thought, USA, and Indonesian Dawa Council. On behalf of Ibn Khaldun University, I would like to introduce uh, all speakers and participants of this conference about this university. Bogor Ibn Khaldun University is the oldest private university located in Bogor City, West Java Province, Indonesia, on 1961. Inspired by a world scholar Ibn Khaldun, this university is named Ibn Khaldun University. The hope is that new Ibn Khaldun's will be born, with uh, who are besides scholars, also intellectuals, or intellectuals who are also scholars. Or new Nathirs will be born as new leaders of Islam and new leaders of Unitary Republic of Indonesia. Ibn Khaldun University is an Islamic university founded by famous scholars in Indonesia, including K. Haji Soleh Iskandar. Now, Dr. Didi Hilman is acting as chairman of this foundation, and Dr. Andin Mujahidin is acting as a rector. It has six faculties, one graduate school, and 23 study programs with around 7,500 students. In 2019, Ibn Khaldun University was included in the top rank 100 national best universities in Indonesia. This university has many lecturers and special alumni who are currently serving as public leaders at the local, national, and international levels. Some of our directors and lecturers are also famous people like Professor Dilin Hafiduddin as Deputy Chairman of the Ad Advisory Council of the Indonesian Ulama Council, Dr. Henry Tanjung and Dr. Irfan Saukibek as members of the Indonesian Wakaf Board, and also Dr. Adian Hussein as Chairman of the Indonesian Da'wah Council nowadays. Based on the vision, mission, and also the motto, faith, knowledge, and morality, this university has produced quality graduates in various fields. This university is committed to conducting innovative research to create reciprocal collaborations that benefit society and also with the IS India, inshallah. With a strong commitment to Chatur Dharma activities, education, research, community service, and dakwah, Ibn Khaldun University has produced high standard graduates who are ready to face the business world. Currently, Ibn Khaldun University has collaborated with several foreign universities located in various countries, such as Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Taiwan, Qatar, Jordan, 
Sri Lanka, Brunei Darussalam, South Korea, Hong Kong, the Philippines, and Russia. Some of the students of Faculty of Islamic Studies came from these countries. Last but not the least, I would like to welcome all the participants coming from Indonesia, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, and other countries, especially the speakers who are willing to join this conference and share their opinion and thinking about Dr. Muhammad Nathir. I would like to conclude my speech by encouraging the attendees to participate in all the activities and discussions for the next two days. I wish everyone a successful, safe, and fruitful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henry Tanjung, for a very brilliant, excellent introduction of the university. And I believe it's already in global reach. We congratulate you on that. And uh, I believe the vision of the university is great and pray to Almighty that it proves uh, a big, big kind of source of knowledge and guidance for the humanity. Thank yes, you for that. Uh, now we have to present the profile of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, the thought leader. And for that, I'm requesting Mr. Ahmed Fawzi Nasir, son of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and former trade attaché at Indonesian Embassy at Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I request Mr. Ahmed Fawzi Nasir. Please come forward and present the profile. Over to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it seems that he has problems to get in. Technical problem. He just he just called me. So, okay. Is he there? He, he has joined uh, another name, Ahmed Fawzi, Ahmed Fawzi Ran, Fawzi Maram, Fawzi, Fawzi, Fawzi Ma. Ahmed Fawzi Ma. He has joined. But uh, I think uh, he is unable to uh, unmute or. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be the problem. I am sending a request for unmute. So please unmute yourself. Yeah, we just yeah. I just call Mr. Fauzi Nasir. He has yeah. difficulties to come in. So yeah, yeah. just he has come, but he only has, as a as a listener. He has so joined. Just, just please put in in this in this. He has joined, but as a listener. He's joined. Okay, and okay. Now we are going to have the profile of Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Uh, on whom the conference is being held and uh, to present his profile, we have Mr. Ahmad Fauzi Nasir with us. He's the son of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and former trade attaché at the Indonesian Embassy at Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I request you, Mr. Ahmad Fauzi Nasir, please present the profile of Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Over to you. Mr. Ahmad Fauzi Nasir. Put him in the panelist. He is still in, outside the panelist. He has joined, but still not in the panelist name. List the operator. Okay, uh, I I suggest that we may have it later till the hour. Okay, okay. okay. And All right. All right. We, we are honored to have with us uh, 
His Excellency Datu Seri Dr. Anwar Ibrahim, former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, whom we know as a global leader with compassion, uh, with the harmony, uh, with spirit of sacrifice, and uh, a, a man who can integrate humanity and uh, the person who can lead the intellectuals and the policy makers together. I believe that uh, we hear him and uh, request him to inaugurate uh, the conference and deliver the inaugural address. Uh, we welcome you, sir, to this conference and I request you uh, to please present the inaugural address. Over to you, sir. Over to His Excellency Datu Seri Dr. Anwar Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah ziyarsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haq li yuzhirahu ala dini kullih wa kafa billahi shahida wa usalli wa usallimu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajba'in. I'm of course very fortunate to be again be meeting the brothers and sisters I believe and must congratulate Institute of Objective Studies with University of Virginia Khaldun together with IIT to organize a very important and pertinent conference. You see generally the Islam in this region Southeast Asia and particularly Indonesia has been somewhat marginalized. Um, there is hardly any study or analysis among even Islamic workers or Islamic movements or contemporary um, intellectuals on the um, unique development of Islam in Indonesia for a variety of reasons. From the first period of Islamization to the formative period uh, of uh, Indonesian independence and um, surfacing of uh, outstanding uh, leaders, political intellectuals, such as uh, Muhammad Natse, that we are uh, having this discourse today. So I think um, it is of course very timely, and, and uh, I believe uh, we have a companion of scholars. I see uh, Kamal Hassan here, Pai Yusuf Kala, and a number of others who have actually real direct experience uh, knowing uh, Bapa Muhammad Natser and also um, studying him. And some, of course, followed his journey directly into politics and in Dewan Da'wah Islamia in Indonesia. Indonesia. I am fortunate because as a young I man, and um, a and, student at um, University of Malaya, uh, had the opportunity to attend some conferences and uh, leaders of uh, HME those days, the Muslim Students uh, Organization in Indonesia, um, brought me to see um, as early as 1969, 70, 71, just post uh, confrontasi. You know, in the history of Malaysia, Indonesia, there was a period under Sukarno where he declared virtual war, confrontation against Malaysia. And shortly after uh, that, uh, then uh, we were sent uh, initially as students. Uh, to meet uh, the, the you know, radical students of Indonesia. And it's interesting, I was brought to see uh, uh, my home, Muhammad Natser, uh, by Fahmi Idris and um, Eki Sharudin, I remember very well. Of course, I was thrilled by this personality. Former prime minister, a great intellectual, uh, a very known and popular leader who has been in prison, uh, and um, virtually has no position, but you can see stream of supporters who express their devotion and love and affection because of his ideas. And uh, the simplicity of his surroundings, I mean, not much uh, deliberated many places, including the research account. I mean, there are hundreds of books uh, <laughs> with me here about Natsir, particularly in Indonesia. I must congratulate our... Um, scholars in Indonesia who have written, you know, so many accounts uh, on Natser and um, 100 years of Natser and uh, a great one, a good one by Luqman Hakim too. Um, so I think uh, I'm not here 
uh, to compete except to share some experience of mine, particularly in the in the realm of ideas and thought, uh, because he's he's a multifaceted uh, Renaissance man in, in many ways. He writes prophetically uh, uh, in a very prophetic manner uh, in the initial Capital Selector, and this is of course a reprint. In, in interesting enough, I have the, the original. A uh, print by Van Hoof of of uh, Holland at that time, um, and and uh, let me summarize using the latest uh, account by Audrey Cahin, the wife of uh, the famous Cahin, um, when when he or she managed to um, bring up uh, the uh, reformist ideals of Nancy, consistent from the 30s when he wrote for Pambela Islam and um, republished under Capita Selecta, which I will of course deal with because this is where the initial um, ideas being formed and formulated by Nancy. Uh, but he was always uh, very strong in his uh, faith and moral values his adherence to Islam and Islamic ideals, his um, interpretation of uh, the Quran and the Sunnah Rasulullah وسلم, understanding, and a great dying from the beginning. And you know, in the 30s, he was already involved initially with uh, with um, uh, I Hassan, uh, but, but uh, what's important is his debate, very known um, literary discourse uh, in Pamela Islam, debating on nationalism, on uh, modern Turkey under Kamal, Mustafa Kamal Atatuk, on the ideas of uh, some modernists in Egypt, uh, like Sheikh Abdul Razak in uh, Al Islam Wal Usul Hukum, about Islam and um, nation state which is partly different i'm not going to enter to that but to suggest that uh this has gone through when he was in his 20s at a very young age writing prolifically uh, on islam and modernity and the need to um, deepen our understanding um, from the set of uh, rituals to the relevance of islam in society and in the nation. I must uh, again commend uh, Professor Diliano, who um, summarized some of these uh, brilliantly in, in his um, modernist Muslim movement of Indonesia, Gerakan Modern Islam Indonesia 1900-1942. Um, well, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited because I love him. This is one of the great outstanding contemporary leaders that have influenced me personally and Abim when I left. You know, there was a time when we had uh, great movements in the Middle East, like the Ikhwan or Jamaat Islami. And um, whilst we benefited immensely from their experiences, I thought from my um, limited experience and the work in Abim, we were much more influenced by the direction of uh, Indonesia or Indonesian Islam under Mashumi or Muhammad Natsi uh, is more inclusive, is uh, accommodate the interests of uh, Islam and Muslims, 90%, but then always take into consideration to try and appreciate, understand, tolerate, include the sentiments of the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the Christians from the very beginning um, and, and uh, very uh, entrenched in cultural sentiments and values. Uh, it is Islam, but um, not uh, dogmatic nationalist, but very um, nationalistic in the, in the more liberal context, um, promoting the language, the literature. Uh, and and uh, that is the, uh, something which I consider exceptionalism of Muhammad Narse. As, uh, as an intellectual, a public intellectual, and political leader. Now, the philosopher thinker 
from France, Roger Garaudi, once said that we show interest and affection for, for the great leaders. It is not enough to bury the ashes of the dead, but to rekindle its flame. That's why uh, Mazur al it is it is uh, commendable that your team with Ibn Khaldun University and Baiti takes the trouble. I mean, it's odd for India to talk about Nasser. I mean, it, it is it is something uh, re re refreshing, you see. Um, uh, and and I think it is not usual, you know. Um, and and I think it shows your foresight and um, understanding uh, and appreciating the contribution of uh, all our brothers throughout the world. Now, you know, uh, what strikes me, and this I've said before in some of our earlier seminars, uh, you know, in his Capital Selector, which of course was a text in our days, and his Fiqh Da'wah, which we republished, and it's interesting that Abim, those days, they published many of his works, um, and uh, which which uh, I referred to in this book when I mentioned um, that Nasser, when talking about development, you see, you don't need, you must not talk about progress and development at the same time destroy. What you develop, institutions, buildings, structures, industries. What you destroy, morality. Uh, there's oppression of workers. There is um, uh, complete uh, neglect, um, in a sense, to allow for grinding poverty and gross inequality to use this uh, more popular balance of today. Uh, but he thought of it long before this became a uh, narrative uh, in, in uh, intellectual circles as we observe at present. Now, uh, I wanted to quote Kahin because there is a time when there was uh, uh, when when Natsir was involved in this petition of fifty uh, leaders and scholars, uh, and therefore he was barred. He was completely uh, not only marginalized but uh, denied any opportunity uh, to serve as a normal uh, citizen in Indonesia. But his consistent message from the 30s to the 80s, when he criticized Muslim societies, including Indonesia, where its upper strata, as we have become grossly materialistic, selfish, and shorn of social conscience, with this development being accompanied being, uh, by a widening gap between the rich and the poor. Um, this was originally from George uh, McCahin in memoriam of Omar Nasser. And um, here referred to by uh, Audrey Kahin, Islam, Nationalism and Democracy, uh, a political biography of uh, Muhammad Nasser, quite a recent publication, I think it's about 2012. Now, I too, I mentioned earlier uh, an example, a striking example, other than the debate on nationalism, al Sabia, what is allowed, what is disallowed, which was debated in the 30s and sometimes until the present, causing confusion among our intellectuals. And the, this, this uh, obsession or admiration for so-called modern Turkey at the expense of their identity and their Islamicity. This was also debated in the 30s. And it's interesting enough, this was between Sukarno, who, who was enchanted by modern Turkey, and Natse, who actually cautioned against this uh, adulation without looking at the substance. So in the terms of the realm of ideas, I will refer to a name which is, uh, uh, well, I should say unheard of in this region or in Asia for that matter. 
not say in capital selector suddenly uh, introduce a name a belgian historian henry pirang now nobody talks about it there's no reference i asked a lot of uh, many scholars of historiography just whether they made references hardly any now um, of course he he, he um, at length he quoted and debated on snook hogronye who wrote the, the two volumes the achines and mecca in the later part of the 19th century uh, which which was a, a thesis on the dutch uh, uh, that prompted later the dutch ethical policy to secularize indonesia and the issue of secularization was discussed uh, in his debate with sugardo and hugronje came to mind but then he introduced the name henry piran it's interesting when um, i was in washington dc i made sure that our brother jamal bazanji ordered as many books as possible by henry piran which is not known among the intellectual circles in washington uh muhammad and chalaman and a history of europe now what is the piran thesis the piran thesis states somewhat clearly that the point of departure between the old culture of civilization and the new modern civilization must be in terms of values and ideas modernity and that is why in this book muhammad and chalaban shows proof uh, sent a, a very fundamental message about the um uh, critical date uh, or, or time where we can we can um, determine the state the new modern state of affairs only with muhammad you know in this battle islam and chalaman at that time charles martel and chalaman then um only with the advent of islam europe understands modernity and and this was actually in terms of uh, history and understanding of society is a tour de force now 10 years later no probably 30 years later our great sociologist scholar um, thinker hossein alatas who's very known for his um, works like myth of the lazy native and also intellectuals living societies in his um, paper to the conference of asian historians in 1960 mentioned this henry piran okay. and he, as you know hussein was associated with nasser in bogor or bandung in their constituency debate debate on the constitution for uh, before the independence of indonesia and he said modern malaysia must not be seen by or determined by the uh, printing or advent of the british but advent of ideas you know and finally in the in 71 his brother professor naqib al atas also one of my sheikhs then wrote islam in the history of, of malay culture and society where he made reference again to the parenthesis you can imagine this was the the beginning was in capita selecta okay where he wrote in the 1930s and it became a tour de force in the entire study of islam and malay indonesian society in the 60s and the 70s and these two texts still become quite uh, uh, pillars in terms of intellectual uh, advancement so uh, it's very interesting here to see the relevance of his ideas and thinking you know of course he elaborates about islam in his role as the, in dewan da'wah for example it's clear the understanding of islam the faith uh, moral values uh, anti corruption drive he got into lots of trouble because of his strong uh disagreement about anti anti against it anti against corruption um and and um, 
So when we talk about Tanatse, to my mind, I think we need to talk about or, or focus on his ideas for societal reform, for the understanding uh, of history and society and the need for Islah in our society. When he talks about development, he talks about progress, he talks about education he, um, and, and um, uh, or issues of governance. Uh, this central pillar of Islam and ethics, anti-corruption and inclusivity. You know, uh, of course, here in Malaysia, where we felt uh, it is more pressing because the nature that uh, Muslims come to about 60 percent. Now, here is a country uh, that he represents 90 percent Muslims, but he made it very clear the clarion call to be uh, in the cause of humanity, in the cause of freedom, and very strong Democrat. And I, I should say that in um, more modern and contemporary society, he was a great uh, Muslim Democrat, I say. That um, I think uh, I would uh, end at that because th that happens to be, this subject happens to be <laughs> my, my um, focus, or I mean, I, I probably follow my Indonesian friends know that any book, uh, any article published on Indonesian Islam or Nazi, that I make sure that um, it's available on my desk. And um, here in our society, I mean, there was a big event in um, commemoration of his 100 years of Nasser. Uh, his books are being published. Uh, some, <laughs> I mean, other than what I said about Indonesia, some of the works are just published here. <clears throat> um, there too many of them, but I want I just to, to show that uh, mainly Abim and the, and the universities here have taken lots of interest in um, this study, understanding of uh, this great uh, Indonesian and a great uh, uh, Muslim. I must again uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Thank you. Uh, Datu Shari Dr. Anwar Ibrahim, former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia. Uh, I believe that uh, with the very, uh, you know, uh, authenticated references, uh, he presented uh, the, uh, the, the great personality of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasser in its right context as the leader of his times and for future. Uh, and uh, he was understanding the challenges and he was uh, knowing what to give and what was the future. So he was a thorough democrat. He was a reformist. Uh, he was an intellectual understanding things. Uh, he could stand for uh, right things. Uh, he could be um, uh, meeting challenges with confidence. And he wanted that uh, uh, there should be straightforwardness in approach. Uh, and that's how he could be uh, even believing, uh, a very great believer of his faith. Uh, he was at heart accommodative, he was uh, secular, and uh, he was a link between the past and the present while maintaining the values. I think these are the features of a very great personality and that was definitely manifested by Dr. Muhammad Nasir in his times, in his life, and that's what was being uh, said by our very loud leader across the borders, Dr. Anwar Ibrahim Saab. Uh, now uh, I'm going back to uh, Mr. Ahmed Fawzi Nasir, the son of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, that if you have joined, please present the profile of Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Mr. Ahmed Fauzi Nasir, over to you, please. Yes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I would like to thank the committee of the International Conference on Personality and Contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir as a national and international thought leader in 20th century. In this conference, we are allowed to share our view on our father, 
no Matashi. Our six siblings, three of us are currently alive, namely Mrs. Hasna Faiza, Mrs. Aisha, Tul Asriya, and myself, Ahmad Nasir. When our father was a Abba, A-B-A. Abba was family life. When Abba was alive, he liked to get so powerful and helping us and find the right path in our life because it coupled with the light of our Umi, our mother, Nur Nahar, which her name means the light of the day. Why was that? Because in the journey of life, Abba and Umi were always together where there is difficulty or happiness. How did Abba educate his children? He never forced his will on his children, especially in our choice of education. He would remind us to choose our type of education, which must be according to our hearts and abilities. Even when detained by Sukarno regime, Many years ago, Abba concern for our education never stopped. That concern is still the most precious thing of, in our life. Abba was really scolded, slapped at his children. Nevertheless, he would reprimand us if our actions were not pleasing to him. On the other hand, hmm? Number ten. To deepen our religious knowledge, Abba invi invited a religion teacher to cheat us from when we were in elementary school to high school. That the religious education never stopped in the forest during the PRI or, or uh, government revolution, revolutionary public initial struggle. Even though there was no, no uh, religion teacher, because Abba immediately stepped into the educate, educated us with the help of his staff. Abba thought us to be democratic, but not assertive, but out of control. Indeed, Abba is the type of person who has a Farming was a far-reaching vision and always takes a lot of consideration before taking action. Abbas' democratic attitude was evident when we were arguing about anything at the dinner table. He likes to smile when watching on our table, our debate. This democratic attitude affects the, affect the way we think about how to face all challenges of life. In politics, Abba never asked or encouraged, encouraged us to follow any political party, even has even his party. Yeah, Indonesia is a book, right? Abba? Abba attitude was because he knows our trade clearly when he were who involved in his struggle. In later time, when his three of us became yeah, civil servants, Abba was Abba was let's say, fight there and keep our good name. You are very grateful for being educated here by him. How to live, how to live in society, regardless social level in all classes. <coughs> the attitude is the Islamic way of life that we got from Abba and Umi. Moreover, living simply during those year made it easy for us to interact with people on a different social level. It's a wonder that since childhood, we must always treat it household assistant, driver, or other parts of our family. Allah always reminds us, 
be smart to be grateful for your blessings. And also advice, always to maintain relationship with the, with the close family and relative other than me. This makes it we always hold dear in our lives. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Jazakallah, Mr. Ahmad Fazi Nasser, for presenting the profile of Dr. Muhammad Nasser. It was good to know many things about his personality, and we are grateful to you for giving us time in this profile to this conference. We are grateful to you. No problem. Make more contributions. Uh, now uh, we uh, we're going to request His Excellency Dr. Yusuf Kalla, former Vice President of Republic of Indonesia, but he's gone in to to speak. But uh, he is uh, attending a funeral, and uh, that's how uh, we will take him later whenever he is able to join. But at the same time, let us hear the words of wisdom from Dr. Guruvala. And uh, he is the chairman of the House Committee for Inter-Parliamentary Cooperation, the House of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia. Dr. Faz Fazli. <laughs> We cannot see the video. Sorry, we cannot see the video. We cannot see the video actually.
it's it's all silent dak sab what is happening it's all silent hello professor vani we can hear you now now yes it is audible and professor m kamal hasan former rector international islamic university malaysia uh, is here with us and uh, he will present the keynote address for the conference uh, i he has been a, a scholar noon uh, for decades now and uh, we ha- we are happy to have him uh, uh, with the institute of objective studies as well uh i request him that kindly present the keynote address for the conference over to professor m kamal hasan former rector international islamic university malaysia assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam ar rahman ar rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له يا رب بص والصلاه بروسر كمال حسن يو ميوت يور يو هيلفون هي ميوتد اي ام ميوت No no okay can you can you hear me yeah yeah can you hear me now yeah 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 okay now yeah yes okay you can, you can hear me now yes yes okay thank you very much okay um bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin sayidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم uh, first of all i like to express my gratitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is by his grace and mercy that i'm able to join this uh, important uh, international conference on our dear father uh, dr muhammad nasir um i'm very honored and privileged to be invited to present uh, a keynote address I am very honored to also be uh, speaking after Datuk Sri uh, Anwar Ibrahim who knew him very well and uh, could give you ev- many information about uh, uh, Bapak Muhammad Nasir uh, but I'm very privileged to be able to uh, share some of my uh, impressions about uh, about uh, Bapak Nasir Uh, the title of again. my uh, paper is uh, right, I think Dr Zaman Khan is having problems so please uh, help him uh, glimpses of uh, political intellectual and religious thought and contribution of Bapa Muhammad Nasir an extraordinary muslim leader of the 20th century um, Indonesia at that time known as Netherlands East Indies before independence has produced one of the greatest Muslim political leaders, statesmen, thinkers, intellectuals and propagators of 20th century Islam in the extraordinary personality of Muhammad Nasir uh, who was born in 1908 and passed away almarhum in 1993. Uh, fondly addressed in Indonesia as Pak Nasir by Muslims and non-Muslims alike, he became the most prominent leader of Islamic politics after the second world war and became the first prime minister of a united post revolutionary indonesia in august 1950 by 1949 he was the head of the islamic party uh, called mashumi which brought together several islamic political parties under one umbrella a western educated intellectual with strong islamic foundation muhammad nasir rose rapidly to the top of political prominence within a short revolutionary period in the 1930s nasir became a leading in, uh, islamic 
polemicist who criticized not only Western misconceptions on Islam, but also uh, the domestic propagation of uh, secular nationalism, whose greatest protagonist at that time was Insignor Sukarno, when he became, when he was a young nationalist intellectual, and, and later when he became the first president of the Republic of Indonesia. There was no doubt that Muhammad Nasir was an exceptionally intelligent, knowledgeable, wise, and compassionate Muslim leader, not only in politics and international relations, but also in Islamic thought, Islamic education, inter-religious dialogue, national and community development, and uh, Islamic propagation or da'wah. Uh, he was loved by the people, as well as his, by his colleagues, and highly respected by friends and foes alike. He was considered as among the, the last of the religio-political giants in Muslim Southeast Asia and was much sought after by the Muslim intelligentsia and Islamic youth leaders in the region and particularly in Indonesia, in, in Malaysia. And earlier we heard from Datu Sri Anwar how uh, he used to uh, visit um, Bapa uh, in the early 70s um, uh, and, and, and was very much uh, impressed by him and uh, he said that he has been very much influenced uh, by the <laughs> thoughts and the, and the personality of uh, Bapak Nasir. Um, and um, I, I just like to mention that I also had the uh, opportunity and also the, uh, the honor to have uh, met him uh, in his house uh, together with uh, Bapak Muhammad Siddiq who, who brought me to, to the house of Pat Nasir in 1973. And then again, uh, uh, in 1993, just a few months before Al-Marhum passed away, uh, Dato Sri Anwar and myself visited him at the hospital here in Jakarta. Alhamdulillah, uh, at least we could meet uh, our great father uh, at the hospital in 1993. Um, now, just uh, I'll go into some of the facets of his thoughts and uh, contributions. And I hope, uh, Dr. Moderator, you let me know uh, five minutes before I'm supposed to end, okay? Because I have uh, 17 pages okay, or 16 okay, pages. Okay, okay, sir. I, I, uh, so yeah. please uh, be, be firm with your timekeeping. I will abide by your, by your commandments. Uh, as a highly regarded political leader, Islamic thinker and activist intellectual, his influence was far greater than any other thinkers of Islam or contemporaries of his time. His close friend and contemporary called Hamka or uh, Haji Abdul Malik Karim Amrullah, 1908-1975, was another famous Islamic religious scholar and propagator of Islam in the Malay Indonesian world. But if Hamka was the, the most well-known ulama intellectual of his time, then Pak Muhammad Nasir was undoubtedly the intellectual ulama par excellence of most post-intelligent, post-independence Indonesia, because the former was educated only in Islamic religious sciences through Arabic, while the latter was formally educated in the secular Dutch-oriented educational system and knew very well the uh, uh, Dutch German, English, French, Latin, and Arabic. A fantastic uh, achievement uh, for a person at that time. Even now, I don't think it's uh, easy for, for people to have that kind of linguistic uh, brilliance uh, and coverage. Uh, while he also had profound knowledge of the religion and civilization of Islam, which he acquired from Islamic religious institutions uh, and private uh, Muslim organizations. Now, I'm going to quote what uh, George Kahin wrote, and earlier we had uh, Datu Sri Anwar referring to Audrey Kahin uh, in her uh, latest biography of Pat Nasir. Uh, and this quotation, uh, I have been you know, quoting this because this really highlighted uh, the essence of the personality of, of uh, we, not, 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 not his thought, but the personality. And this is what George Kahin said when uh, he met uh, Pat Nasir uh, when Panasir at that time was a minister of, uh, of, of information. He said that, uh, here, this is what, what I'm quoting from his, uh, from his book. Um, uh, last of the giants among Indonesia's nationalist, 
and revolutionary political leaders, he, that is Muhammad Nasir, undoubtedly had more influence on the course of Islamic thought and politics in post-war Indonesia than any of his contemporaries. By nature, uh, this is a personality, by nature extraordinarily modest and unpretentious, he had a well-deserved reputation for personal integrity and political probity. He always lived simply uh, and respect with respect to house and attire. I think you will read later on. He was he was so poor that you know he had to live in some of his uh, colleagues' uh, uh, homes uh, in, in the struggle, in the political struggle. Uh, and then uh, he says, uh, even in in 1950 as prime minister, when I first met him in 1948, this is what Kahin said, and he was uh, the Republic's Minister of Information. I found a man in what was surely the most mended shirt of any official in Jakarta. He was, that was his only shirt. Most mended, in other words, he had one shirt and then, you know, it was torn here and then and, and, and mended it. And this was worn by a minister of information at that time. And I think uh, his officers later on decided to go and buy a shirt and gave him another shirt. Uh, as a young Muslim uh, student leader of the Young Islamitan Bond, or Union of Muslim uh, Young Muslims of Bandung, and a teacher in the city, Nasir began writing on the subject of Islam in 1929 and 1935, uh, particularly in the magazine Pambela Islam, associated with uh, um, Ahmad Hassan, a rather hard liner, religious leader of a reformist uh, organization called Prasatwan Islam of Persis, to which uh, Nasir aligned himself uh, in those days. His grounding in the knowledge of Al Quran, Sunnah, and Arabic uh, was deepened by his study of classical as well as contemporary exegesis of the Quran. So he was able to go back to uh, Al Tabari and so on, uh, Zamakhshari and uh, Ibn Kathir, and later even, you know, um, uh, um, that is Fizilal um, al Quran. And also his Tafsir uh, uh, al Furqan by by his teacher at that time, Ahmad Hassan. Um, now I will. Okay, he has authored approximately forty five books, uh, monographs, and hundreds of articles in various magazines and journals. And this is something that that uh, was not mentioned by Datuk Sri Anwar earlier. When he read, when Panasi read, what the influential Dutch uh, Orientalist Snook Hobronje wrote, namely, uh, La solution de la question islamique dépend uh, de la décision des, uh, des indigènes à notre civilisation. That is, uh, the civilization to the uh, Islamic problem um, in, in, in Indonesia hinges upon the adherence of the indigenous people to our, that is, Western civilization through secular Western education. So uh, Ponasi became very much motivated to establish Islamic educational institutions in order to counter the negative effects of secular uh, education introduced in Indonesia by the Dutch. So he was regarded uh, as a perfectionist and, and philosophical teacher, guru, young perfectionist, philosophist. He was very concerned with the negative effects of secular education, bearing in mind what uh, Snook Horonye uh, advised to the Dutch government at that time. And this is what Snook Horonye says. This is also in the book, uh, in Capita Selecta, is uh, Western education and learning will be able to liberate Muslim people from the grip of Islam. Now, realizing the negative social and political consequences of the educational and cultural dichotomy of traditionalist and conservative uh, religious education on the one hand, and that of modern secular education on the, on the Muslim community on the other hand, Nazi felt the need to work towards the integration or unification of the two opposing systems so that eventually there would emerge the ulama intellectual and the intellectual ulama ideal types in Indonesian society. Hence, uh, Pat Nasir expressed as early as 1938 
the necessity of establishing a higher Islamic college or what was called Skola Tinggi uh, Islam or Universitet Islam in Indonesia. And, and then he also formed the association of Muslim higher institutions of, of learning Perikatan Perguruan Perguruan Muslim in Indonesia with the acronym Parmusi. The Higher Islamic College was founded in Jakarta in 1945 and uh, was moved to Yogyakarta in 1946. Bapa uh, Pak Siddiq knows this very well and he was the one who shared this information uh, with me um, more than a decade ago. Uh, by 1947, it became the Islamic University of Indonesia, Universitas Islam Indonesia, the first private Islamic university in Indonesia. And as a leading uh, public intellectual, Muhammad Nasir's academic writings not only focus on educational issues, they touch on various social, political, economic, religious, and cultural issues of the time. But in each of them, he would introduce Islamic perspectives. Education in Nazi's intellectual discourse is a process of holistic, spiritual, physical development, which uh, he says, yang menuju kepada kesempurnaan dan lengkapnya sifat-sifat kemanusiaan dengan arti yang sesungguhnya, which leads to the perfect formation and complete development of human qualities in its fullest sense. He explained that the aim of integrated education was none other than to actualize the life of Obudiya the life of servitude to Allah as ordained by Allah uh, in Surah al uh, verse uh, 56. He reiterated that in the worldview of the Quran, it was the knowledgeable scholars who were the truly uh, God-fearing servants of, of, of Allah. In 1938, uh, Nasir joined an Islamic uh, political party and became the leader of the Bandung branch until the Second World War. Uh, but after that, uh, he was. Uh, he joined uh, Mashumi, which was uh, Mashumi is a is acronym of um, Majlis Shura Muslimin in Indonesia or Consultative Council of Indonesian Muslims. And later on, uh, he became the leader of Mashumi. And after the war, uh, Mashumi became the most powerful political force and also the voice of Islamic nationalism and patriotism uh, and also moderation as opposed to the two contending ideologies of that time of national, uh, secular nationalism and communism. Okay, please take another five minutes. Okay, good. Okay, now I will try to skip that. Let me go to... Um, Okay, I will I'll skip the polemic between him and uh, and Sukarno okay, because I think that uh, um, Sri Anwar Ibrahim also alluded to that earlier. But uh, this is well known, so I'll skip that. I'll just go more to the uh, the da'wah uh, content uh, because that um, um, Sri Anwar mentioned that Abim used the the book uh, Fiqh Da'wah as one of the texts, and uh, I think it's it is still very, very relevant to Dawah today. What was said uh, by uh, uh, Pat Nasser in 1967, 68, uh, is still very, very relevant today and still very deep. So I just want to uh, go to that. But once my time is up, you let me know, I will stop immediately. As a prominent Muslim leader of the Muslim Ummah, Nasser's exceptional intellectual, ethical, and spiritual qualities have impressed his close associates as well as the masses. Uh, as a, then I, I quoted here from his, his good friend, Bapak Muhammad Rom, but I will skip that because there's no time. Um, then uh, he also referred to the, the problem of, um, of uh, pluralism at that time. And now, of course, pluralism is a big issue. Uh, religious pluralism is a big issue in, in Indonesia and also to a certain extent in Malaysia. But uh, Pat Nasir already cautioned not to, to, to do what he says, agama gado gado. You know, they're just mixing together all uh, the good uh, aspects of Islam, the good aspects of Bund Hinduism, the good aspect of Buddhism, put them together and then uh, present a, a new religion, but agama gado gado. And he, um, so he was against that. Um, and then, um, 
Yeah, I would say uh, just uh, the advent of the new order. The new order, as you know, came after the collapse of uh, Sukarno's uh, regime, and uh, that was led by uh, President uh, Suharto. Um, but unfortunately, after the new order took over in 1966, uh, Panasir and, and Mashumi were not allowed to be active. They were prevented from active uh, political activities. In fact, uh, Islamic uh, political uh, activism was very much curtailed uh, by the army. Uh, that is, I, I mentioned this, and uh, I will stick. I will now go to um, uh, his da'wah. Uh, Panasir was known and admired uh, not only for his broad religious knowledge, but also his um, uh, his um, uh, his his uh, understanding uh, and wisdom about uh, da'wah in uh, in a pluralistic society like Indonesia. And uh, one of the, in the first essay in that book, he talked about how uh, divine revelation actually guides uh, the fitra of human beings uh, to be able to, to know itself, know God, and then serve God in the proper way. And Patnasi spent a lot of time uh, on that. Now I've come to the, uh, I, um, we have one more minute. Can I go to the conclusion now? Okay, I'll go to the conclusion. That uh, one minute and a half, I hope you don't mind. Uh, Patnasir, this is my conclusion. Patnasir was fortunate to witness the collapse of the new order, which had delayed the rebirth of uh, democracy and the spread of reformist uh, Islamic uh, democratic ethics. You know, but uh, the, the, uh, the new order was brought down by many of his former students uh, and disciples. Uh, in the reformist movement. Uh, the growth of extremists, uh, then, then, we, we, uh, then Indonesia um, saw this, witnessed the growth of uh, Islamic or Muslim extremism on the one hand, and then uh, the development of uh, pluralism and also uh, liberalism on the other hand. And um, uh, I'm coming to the la last page now, doctor. Last page, please. Um, <laughs> um, in order to avoid uh, uh, falling into the traps of, of either this, uh, uh, what uh, is called ifrat, this excessiveness, uh, rigidity, immoderation, extremism, that is ifrat, and on, on the one hand, and tafrit on the other hand, uh, laxity, uh, negligence, liberality, in the 21st century, we're talking about 21st century now, it's crucial and urgent that the younger generation of Muslims learn from the past great leaders of the Ummah in Indonesia, such as Pak Nasir and also Buya Hamka and other exemplaries of the exponents of the Wasatiyah, Rahmaniyah, uh, Insaniyah, and also al Hanafiyah to uh, as samha nature of tolerant and magnanimous uh, characteristics of Islam whereby Muslims live in peace, harmony, and mutual respect with non-Muslim communities without compromising the fundamental principles of Abrahamic faith. This is the last one now, last paragraph. But Nasir has spent his whole life in a long, peaceful, religio-political struggle which encompassed the whole dimensions of Islam as a spiritual meeting between God as such and servants of God as such, between Allah as the Khalik and uh, the Ibadullah as such, as a religion of fitrah and as a universal, holistic, and virtuous civilization, because Islam is not just a religion, but a complete civilization. And um, Buya, Hamka, uh, Buya Nasir quoted uh, the views of, um, of, of, uh, of um, some Orientalists uh, at that time. Um, uh, H.A.R. Gib, I think it was who, who said that. Uh, so in today's world, it would be difficult to find a Muslim religio-political leader who possesses intellectual brilliance with profound knowledge of Western and Islamic civilizations, political wisdom with ethics and probity, moral integrity of a high order, exceptional simplicity and, and humility, uh, which uh, Kahin had observed, uh, and extra, uh, and uh, also, uh, and this is of course my 
my my humble addition that uh, he was also a personality with Halb Salim, uh, the sound spiritual heart, uh, because um, as you know in that verse, uh, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, يَوْمَ لَا يُنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَّ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ I believe Pak, uh, Pak Nasir returned to Allah بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ uh, But Pak Nasir had bequeathed, and this is my last sentence, Pak Nasir had bequeathed to the younger generation of Muslims in Indonesia and also in Malaysia and the Malay Indonesian world his invaluable intellectual ethical legacy which is still relevant still very much relevant to the pluralistic, multi-religious and cosmopolitan Indonesian and Malaysian societies and therefore uh, should continue to be a major source of historical knowledge, intellectual inspiration and religious motivation for them to work humbly in his blessed footsteps. Jazakallah, Professor, and uh, we know you are a great scholar and uh, reputed. I, I am tempted to make comments on your uh, comprehensive keynote address, but we don't have that much time. I would say that you have really done great justice uh, with the theme, and you have presented a very good keynote address, and it has set the tune for the conference for two days, different aspects of the life of uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, the times uh, where he was living, and then his, his responses to youth and uh, to the people of the world, to people of Indonesia, his simplicity. I think all the aspects have been uh, given some, some kind of uh, uh, treatment in your keynote address. And now we are having with us His Excellency Dr. Yusuf Kalla. He is a former Vice President of Republic of Indonesia. Earlier he was in some social gathering. Uh, we welcome him to the conference now. Uh, and uh, he is giving us some words of wisdom. Uh, and I believe that uh, he will uh, you know, uh, address us uh, uh, with something which he has he is supposed to because of his position. And, and at the same time, he will be enlightening us but definitely within the time, because uh, we have a few more speakers. Uh, Dr. Yusuf Kalla, over to you. Please. Uh, please unmute yourself. You are mute. Somebody is helping him. Okay. okay. Now you are audible. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asfir alam biya yumusrin. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahbihi ajma'in. Um, Chairman, so I'm so sorry I'm uh, late because uh, I just uh, visit the funeral of my friend. Uh, That's why uh, I uh, now in the car to back home. Um, yes, the many speaker uh, uh, honest to uh, talking about uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir. He is uh, one of Indonesian Muslim leaders as uh, who have. Uh, very variety of uh, his uh, leadership. He's intellectual. I think uh, Professor before has been how intellectual Dr. Nasir. He write many books, give many speech, and he is one thing very important. He is uh, uh, only in high school, uh, but Dutch high schools, uh, but coming with the self uh, study about uh, Islam and uh, of course with the uh, a mentor of Dr. Hassan, Dr. Chokro Aminoto, Dr. Agus Salim, his mentor of his uh, intellectual is from that. Intellectually, one thing very important for seeing that looking Islam was a tear, and but Islam is ideology. Uh, it's one thing that very uh, important is mission, uh, visions in Islam, 
and we in the in intellectually all knows that he has ch chairman of mashumi mashumi is the is uh, one party that's mostly uh, or Islamic organization joined together to establish a mashumi uh, with his leadership mashumi is one of the biggest party at that time in in 15s uh, besides intellectual he is heroes because when independence day he's one of the uh, including of the uh, Dr. Muhammad Nazir, that's why, uh, and of course, he's politician. Politician because he's chairman of Mashumi, which uh, holds this opinion that uh, mostly Islam is ideology for the countries. It, it is uh, one opposition of Dr. Muhammad Nazir. Uh, and of course, he's, he's ulama. You know, all know where. Ulama, and after... Uh, the last the last uh, year of his uh, activities is uh, Dai, uh, which is uh, Dai and established the one Dawa Indonesia very important thing and uh, statement. This is a combination of the many uh, profiles of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, and they, that's why until now on so it will be usually Indonesian peoples remember what the trauma is doing for the country. Uh, what main uh, thought of the Rav Nasir, I explained with the uh, professor that just uh, before, um, and his opinions uh, usually uh, good after his non-active uh, politicians, uh, his international well-known, he's one member of uh, 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 all uh, Muslim uh, Congress, Muktamar Alam Islami, and Rabita Alam Islami. One organization that he's joining together. That's why he's very close with the uh, intellectual for many countries in the world because uh, he is uh, uh, now. And one, uh, the idea of uh, Dr. Mohan Nazir, when he is in the party, he said that uh, that was through politics. But after he he actively in the Dawa organization and politics with Dawa, this is one thing that you, he usually uh, think about Dawa by all way politics but politics by Dawa. This is one thing very important thing uh, 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 for Dr. Wan Nazir, and you hope that uh, young generation in Indonesia, of course. Uh, uh, following so what objectively objectively of course one country. In politics, he is very uh, remember of the people when Indonesia uh, countries following federal country in 15 in federal, but with his uh, move in the parliaments and changes from uh, federal, federal country to United countries, unity Indonesian countries. This is one thing that uh, his uh, remembering of the peoples is uh, thinking about it. But Indonesia should be one country, unity, unity of Indonesia, not federal. There's in, in politics. And that's why if you uh, we're talking about Dr. Mawazir, it is one politician, intellectuals, academically, uh, and uh, ulama, and many things. That's why I thank you very much for the Institute of Objective Studies, which is uh, uh, discuss about Dr. Mawazir. Thank you very much for this uh, possibility. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I think it was a very great narration uh, from your side, uh, Dr. Yusuf Kallavi. Appreciate your joining us and on this great occasion. Uh, and now we are having uh, with us again Dr. Fazle Zoon, uh, Chairman of the House Committee for Inter-Parliamentary Cooperation, the House Representative of the Republic of Indonesia, okay. uh, and uh, he will uh, say a few words. Uh, I, I request Dr. Fazli Zoon, please uh, uh, bless with the conference with a few words. A few words of wisdom, okay, please. Okay. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Muhammad Mansur Alam, Chairman of the Institute of Objective Studies in India, and uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm uh, also on the way because this is my political party anniversary. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. We can hear you. Yes. Uh, good afternoon from Jakarta. Yes. Peace be upon us all. May I wish you and your family health, uh, safety, and compassion in overcoming the difficult time during this pandemic. And allow me. Yeah, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Fazli, we heard your video. Now I think you can give briefly, briefly some of the opinions and that will be quite appreciated god bless you thank you so much please hello hello okay so actually i prepared that because uh i was so sure that i can manage my time after so you you i sent the video actually and i heard that the video cannot come out uh, on the screen uh but i think uh I would like to also share a bit of uh, you about uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, about uh, Muhammad Nasir, which I also admire because he's not just an ulama, but also a statesman. And I believe that uh, I already wrote in my paper and study about Muhammad Nasir. And I hope uh, everyone can also get the paper, uh, my observation on Nasir's uh, political thought and also his political activities and Dr. Nasir especially I think it's very important for Indonesia because he's the one who uh, proposed the second proclamation of the uh, United Indonesia Federated States of Indonesia and that is a very important stage in Indonesian chronicle of history and I believe uh, this is should be remembered that he can be called also as a founding fathers of Indonesia. And I just went to Muntok yesterday in Bangka. There's a new province, Bangka Blitung. Uh, and I found also the footsteps of Muhammad Nasir when he went to see Sukarno and Hatta and other founding fathers there uh, to prepare the diplomatic uh, roundtable conference uh, before the Rum Royan conference. So I think uh, so many things that can be said about Muhammad Nasir, and I have already mentioned some of that, uh, especially the thought and about Mosi Integral of Muhammad Nasir in my paper and also in my, my short remarks in the video. And I hope you can hear that in my video. Thank you very much, Dr. I'm so sorry, I'm on all on my way also. Jazakallah, Dr. Uh, I think you have a great responsibility. You are uh, the chairman of the House Committee of Interparliamentary Cooperation. Very great assignment you have. We wish you success in that. And we are grateful to you for joining, uh, even uh, after we had played your video. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you again. And now uh, we have with us uh, the chairman of the Institute of Objective Studies uh, and Dr. Muhammad Manzoor Alam. Uh, I request him that we want to have some words of appreciation from you. Uh, please uh, come out and appreciate us. Uh, yes, uh, you are there and uh, you are at the back and uh, but we need your appreciation and please give some words of appreciation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala Rasulih al-Kareem. I will say only two, three things. Professor Zedem Khan has given a very good introduction of the Institute of Objective Studies. And we also about the Ibn Khaldun, University of Ibn Khaldun, IT, 
this program on which we are gathering together that is the personality and contribution of muhammad nasir as a national and international thought leaders in the 20th century this is one of the features and the program of institute of objective studies the idea behind of this kind of program that uh, at the international level and the national level let the scholars and the youth especially must know the thought and ideas of those great leaders in, in if they made a huge contribution unless they will not be knowing what kind of work has been done including dr nasir mohammad nasir the organizer for oxygen and many top people so this is one of the uh, one of the idea the second of the same that how to how to protect in heritage of islam and how to promote those ideas globally because the world is very small that's why we are on the zoom today and we are talking and having this program as a conference so that is a, one of the great things so one must know especially the youth unless they will not be knowing the contribution of those great leaders and that's that has to be not only to protect the heritage in that sense but also to promote through the through the knowledge through education through communication through collaboration through cooperation and hopefully it will be leading it will be giving a great idea to the youth to take care about islamic vision for the human at large because the quran make it very clear walaqad karamna bani adam we have to work from that point of view how to make the honoring of the progeny of adam alayhi salam so this is the one of the great things that's so that is a i i have a written i will not ask to read it because we have to save the time second thing and the third thing we request brothers from the ibn khaldun university and the indonesian government and indonesian uh, and diwan dawa that the work of muhammad <coughs> muhammad nasir must be translated all his work must be translated in english so that we also we are in india we are having 18 official languages so we will also try to translate in other, in indian languages so that people of this country also should know what what kind of the great leaders including dr muhammad nasir nasir who has contributed not only for india indonesia but the globally internationally the last thing i will say this is the beginning we can plan for the future point of view our system is that all the proceedings will be published in collaboration inshallah and that proceedings will be also having to have some of the joint programs so that some of the researches can be done the views of uh, muhammad nasir inshallah so let me conclude that uh, institute of objective studies has published more than 500 books um, research books on the different aspects of life whether it is a law constitution islamic aspects etc etc economics etc so for point of view because my throat and eyes also not support so that's why i will just stop at this uh, moment uh, once again i really <clears throat> appreciate the collaboration the efforts which have been made by mohammad siddiq and also the uh, uh, people brothers from the uh, ibn khaldun university so now we will not request anyone to read out my uh, my 
uh, talk which I have drafted. That will be that is the uh, inshallah will continue for the future point of view. Jazakumullah khairan wa khairan jaza. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Dr. Muhammad Manzoor Alam, Chairman, Institute of Objective Studies, for your words of appreciation. Uh, I think the suggestion that was great is that uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir should be translated into English and other languages, and collaboration should be now strengthened between the organizing institutions and other institutions to carry forward the things ahead. And then it was very important that for the future generations, we should carry the thought and also we should carry the knowledge about the personalities who have been contributing to the world in terms of knowledge, welfare, uh, and like that. Uh, Jazakallah. And now I am requesting, we are having with us Dr. Ahmad Totanji. He is Vice President of International Institute of Islamic Thought, USA, uh, that uh, we welcome you to the conference. And I think uh, uh, we should have mentioned in the beginning as you were being with us, uh, but uh, I could find it only later on your visibility. Uh, I believe that you must be this time awakening at night and then being with us, taking all the tri trouble, uh, we appreciate it. And uh, uh, over to you, Dr. Ahmad Tutanji. Kindly bless us with your uh, concluding uh, my remarks for the session as the chairman of the session. Over to you, Dr. Ahmad Tutanji. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi thumma alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada. وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. My dear brothers and sisters, you can see from the beginning my voice is in bad shape. That is why I talked to the organizers and I said I'll just say a few words and then inshallah my son Muhammad will read <clears throat> what experience I had with our great leader while I was doing a lot of work on the student and youth work on worldwide. And alhamdulillah, we achieved a lot. And it was one of the reasons why we were able to do this exceptionally well. People like him who would come and say, we see hope in what you are doing. Please include these things in it. Please do not forget our brothers and sisters in Indonesia to be with you in this. These leaders, they used to see things and what the Ummah needs. And Alhamdulillah, you have heard with these wonderful things which have been said about our great leader. I remember first time I met him in Hajj, there was a conference King Faisal uh, had called for, this would be in the paper, you will see it. And uh, I went in 1970 to him there and every time we were getting from him the experiences he had and also how to upgrade it when we are using it in our places. I will stop here and I'll say Muhammad inshallah my son will speak and uh, one point I'll emphasize I have learned a lot we had a very very great brother with him and when in 1970 I came to Andalusia, he was the chief secretary of uh, our leader. And uh, since then, 50 years, we love him every day, a bit more than the day before. And that is brother Muhammad Sadiq, ex-president of Diwan Da'wa Islamiyah, which was the da'wa which our leader brought to Indonesia and alhamdulillah to the world. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad Tutunji. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. 
my dear brothers and sisters, or as they say in uh, Indonesia, sudara, sudara, sudari, sudari, I am delighted to be with you today for this great conference, personality and contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasser as, an, uh, as a national and international thought leader in the 20th century. I am happy to speak about Dr. Muhammad Nasser and our relationship with him since 1965, when we met for the first time in Mecca and Mukarrama, as I just mentioned, at the conference for which King Faisal had invited all the outstanding scholars and great personalities of the Muslim world to the Muslim World League. Alhamdulillah, it was a great conference which brought together these Muslim leaders and personalities from all over the world to Mecca al mukarrama and opened the door for them to network with each other in such a great event where King Faisal announced the concept of Islamic solidarity, which later became the organization of the Islamic Conference, OIC, which eventually became the organization of Islamic cooperation, OIC. Alhamdulillah, the conference was a great success. And one of the highlights of the conference for all the Muslim delegations was the presence of His Excellency, Dr. Muhammad Nasser, the first prime minister of Indonesia after independence. It was the first time for me to meet Dr. Muhammad Nasser as well as many of the other delegates. It was the first time for them as well and to spend some good time with him. I realized that I was with one of the great people of the Ummah. I immediately started taking notes to learn from his great experience. I was the president of the Muslim Students Association, MSA, of the US and Canada, which was established only two years before this conference. However, we had made a good impact in the Muslim world and elsewhere, and for the first time, some Muslim youth participated in the conference. Dr. Muhammad Nasser was very happy to hear about the MSA in America, and he had a lot of questions and a wealth of advice for us. When Dr. Muhammad Nasser learned that almost 50%, yes, about half the membership, almost 50% of MSA membership was postgraduate students, masters and PhD, and that they were the cream of the crop. They were the most brilliant Muslim students of the entire Ummah because they came from all over the world. I remember an important sentence from Dr. Muhammad Nasser. He said, this is the future of Muslims. I repeat again, this is the future of Muslims. And I was very much surprised. He continued, these bright people will bring the change which we are all waiting for. Now, after so many years, I am seeing some of his statements become a reality. Reaffirming his great vision as a leader for the success of the Muslim Ummah as though he was seeing it coming. Dr. Muhammad Nasser also shared with me some wonderful information about the youth and student movements in Indonesia. The Indonesian students in America were very few. And he said, please do not forget Indonesia when you have any conferences and meetings so that our students and youth leaders can join you as well. Alhamdulillah, a lot of good came out of these meetings. And when we decided in 1969 in America to form an umbrella organization for the Muslim students organizations from all over the world, the International Islamic Federation of Student Organizations, if so, was born. I requested from Dr. Muhammad Nasser to give me some advice on what we should be doing in this new organization, if so, with 12 branches worldwide. I still remember his smile. He said, training programs for your youth students. Secondly, he said, you should try to publish some of the outstanding books of the great Muslim leaders of our times, 
for the students to become aware of them. He then added, you should translate these books to the languages of as many Muslim countries as possible. He also suggested to have many international Islamic conferences for the Muslim student organizations so that they will know each other and become familiar with each other's way of thinking. I was the first Secretary General of IFSO, and I shared the advice of Dr. Muhammad Nasser in our first executive committee meeting for us to study and make our future plans. The students were thrilled and they saw the wisdom of this great man. His words shaped the future of the organization for decades to come. In about seven years, we had Muslim Students Association, MSA, in about 45 to 50 countries. And if so, became a true worldwide organization, which was also registered in the United Nations. Eventually, the branches became 500. As you are all very familiar, if so, published about 40 books in the first uh, batch of books that it was working on. And those books were translated to more than 100 languages. I had the opportunity to visit Indonesia in July 1970 and informed Dr. Muhammad Nasser that I was coming to visit Indonesia and to meet your students. Alhamdulillah, I had a few memorable days in this wonderful country during that visit, and I got the idea, why don't we change the Secretary General in if so every two years, while keeping the past, the past Secretary Generals as members of the executive who pass their experiences to the new board. Alhamdulillah, we were able to elect the second Secretary General, Dr. Hisham Al-Talib, who is currently the president of IIIT as well, from America in 1975. And the third Secretary General was Dr. Imaduddin Abdurrahim, the president of the student organization of Indonesia at that time. This enriched the relationship and facilitated how these student leaders must learn from each other to upgrade the youth activities all over the world. Dr. Muhammad Nasser worked very hard to convince the people of Indonesia to gather together and to work towards getting independence from the Netherlands. When they finally succeeded in getting their independence with a lot of sacrifice, Dr. Muhammad Nasser became the first prime minister of Indonesia after the independence. Dr. Muhammad Nasser was the head of Diwan al-Dawan Islamiyah in Indonesia, which Brother Muhammad Siddiq was holding until about two weeks ago. Brother Muhammad Siddiq, and I'm speaking on behalf of my father, I'm reading his uh, speech, is a young man like my father, 30, uh, 30 years plus. So Brother Muhammad Siddiq was the chief secretary of Dr. Nasser, the first time I visited them in Indonesia. He held some very important positions in OIC, the Islamic Development Bank, and the United Nations. And Alhamdulillah, he is still very active. Brother Muhammad Siddiq manages the activities of the IIIT in almost all of Indonesia. Brother Muhammad Siddiq completed his five-year term as the executive chairman of Diwan al-Dawal Islamiyah about two weeks ago, and he is currently the vice chairman and it, uh, of its board of trustees. Diwan al-Dawal Islamiyah has Dawa workers in almost every inhabited island of Indonesia. They are in thousands. And finally, the writings of Dr. Muhammad Nasser became the main source of inspiration and unification for the people of Indonesia to choose Islam until today. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Tatonji for your uh, presidential address.
it was really a very thoughtful and gave a lot of the information about your personal relationship with Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Uh, you also reminded us uh, about your truth. Uh, your son looks very much like you when you were young. And uh, even I could recall your presence in uh, our many conferences of Simi in Adiga, in Bhopal, and other parts of the country. Uh, I also used to be very young uh, at that time. So thank you very much for delivering this uh, 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 and reading out uh, your father's uh, address to us. And uh, now it is my pleasant uh, duty uh, to say thanks uh, to all the participants uh, who made this uh, inaugural session of the conference very successful. It was really uh, an international event. I could see that more than 220 people have attended this program uh, from uh, many parts of the world, from India, from Indonesia, Malaysia, USA, and the Middle East. So it was a really a truly international conference. and. Uh, <clears throat> Organized also by uh, many institutions. Uh, surely it was initiative of the Institute of Objective Studies of New Delhi, India. But uh, we received uh, cooperation and support, uh, which we acknowledge with uh, sincere thanks. Uh, we received support from Dr. Muhammad Siddiq Diwan Dawa Islamia of Indonesia and Ibn Khaldun University, Bogor, Indonesia. We appreciate and acknowledge their cooperation and support uh, in organizing this conference very much uh, with sincere thanks. And uh, we again appreciate uh, that a lot of many people have attended this conference from Indonesia, uh, mainly from Ibn Khaldun University and other part of Indonesia. So we appreciate their cooperation and support in making this inaugural session of the conference very successful. I also take this opportunity to thank uh, 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 Professor Zedem Khan, who introduced to our international audience uh, the Institute of Objective Studies, its uh, multi uh, dimensional activities, uh, our uh, the conferences we organize, the lectures we organize, and the academic works we are carrying out. He gave a very good introduction of the Institute of Objective Study. Then uh, we also thank Dr. Henry Tanjong, Vice Director, Postgraduate School in Khaldun University, uh, who also introduced uh, his. Uh, organization as well as uh, uh, welcome the delegates uh, of this international conference webinar rather on a very important personality uh, dr mohammad nasir we as we all know that uh, uh, this uh, conference is being organized uh, to discuss the personality as well as contribution of dr mohammad nasir of indonesia and then we thank uh, Mr. Ahmed Faudi Nasib. Uh, he is the son of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasib, whose contribution and life and personality is being discussed in this seminar. And uh, he gave a brief profile of his father and introduced to us uh, very unknown aspect of his personality, uh, for which we are thankful to him. We also thank, rather, we are very grateful to Dr. Uh, Anwar, His Excellency Dr. Anwar Ibrahim, former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia. Uh, he spoke at length about uh, the contribution and personality of Dr. Muhammad Nasir. He knew him very well. Actually, he was the one who initially suggested to organize this seminar. Uh, to discuss and appreciate and acknowledge the contrib great contribution made by a great personality, Dr. Muhammad Nasir of Indonesia. Uh, 
So we thank uh, Dr. Anwar Ibrahim very much for uh, delivering the inaugural address of this conference. Then we had two guests of honors, uh, His Excellency Dr. Joseph Kalla. Uh, he is a former Vice President of Republic of Indonesia. Uh, he, he spoke briefly, but uh, well on point, and his uh, thoughts were very relevant. And he shed some light on the life and personality of uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Nazir, for which we are very much uh, grateful to him. We are also grateful to Dr. Fadil Zon. Uh, we heard his uh, recorded video, and then he gave, in the end, a brief uh, uh, address uh, in which he gave us uh, 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 the main points of his uh, message, which was already uh, heard through uh, recorded video. And uh, then we also thank uh, uh, we are really very grateful for uh, to uh, Professor Muhammad Kamal Hassan, a former rector, International uh, Islamic University of Malaysia, and uh, a great professor, really a great scholar in his own right. Uh, he spoke at length about the life and personality of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir. He covered almost all aspects of his personality and uh, gave a very good account of uh, his contribution uh, to the promotion of democracy, Islam, and society in Malaysia uh, through his lecture and also through the lecture of Dr. Muhammad uh, Anwar Ibrahim. We could understand the multidimensional, multidimensional contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, mainly in Indonesian politics. And uh, this was really a new idea that uh, uh, instead of establishing an Islamic state, uh, he sought a place for Islam uh, in Indonesian polity uh, through democratic means. So this is a, a new up, uh, it was a sort of new discourse for us, for which uh, uh, and that has been highlighted very much uh, by uh, Professor Kamal Hassan Saab, for which we are grateful to him. In the end, uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mandur Anam Saab, Chairman Institute of Objective Studies. Sadly, he is not feeling well today, and that's why he could not complete uh, his address. And uh, uh, due to the shortage of time, and uh, uh, anyway, that will be available on our website later on. And we also hope to uh, publish the proceedings of the seminar. And in the end, I thank uh, Dr. Ahmad Tudonji sahab. Uh, uh, he was also not feeling well, but uh, he, uh, he spoke a little bit. Uh, and then his uh, you know, uh, uh, concluding address, our presidential address was read out by his son, Mohammed Tudonji. Uh, so we are thankful to both father and son for gracing this occasion and reading out the uh, presidential address. With this, we come to the conclusion of uh, this inaugural session of uh, international conference uh, that we have organized to discuss the personality, life, and contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir of Indonesia. Uh, the, now we will break uh, and uh, gather again here at 1.30, and the link will be the same. And uh, that will be our first technical session that will start at 1.30 p.m. and continue up to 3 p.m. And the uh, topic uh, that the panelists will be discussing in that session is Dr. Nasir's personal life, early days, and emergence as a national leader. Uh, that is the topic, and it will be chaired by Professor Muhammad Afzalwani and uh, Dr. Muhammad Siddiq from Indonesia, Dr. Uh, uh, Nirwan yeah. Saifreen from uh, Ibn Khaldun University, Professor Hasina Asia from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi, Professor M. Fahim Akhtar Nadwi uh, from uh, Morana Adar University of Hyderabad, in India, and Dr. Kamal Ashraf Qasmi, uh, who is assistant professor at Arya University, Kolkata. Uh, these are the panelists, and they will be discussing uh, in the in the uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir's personality. 
uh, in the first technical session is starting at 1.30 p.m. Uh, according to uh, standard Indian time, please, it may be noted by the uh, uh, international audience. And that means that, uh, what is the time right now here? Um, one second. There is a difference of one and one. No, no, time is three p.m. Indonesia. Three p.m. Right now it is twelve here. Hmm. It means that uh, almost after one hour and twenty minutes, one hour, one hour twenty minutes, we will gather here, and so we request yes, the yes. audience to be with us after one hour. Again, after one hour, fifteen twenty minutes. Thank you very much. The uh, request, the link is uh, open uh, during the break. The link will be open during the break, so there won't be we have there won't be any problem when you join us again in the first technical session at 1:30 Indian Standard Time. Thank you very much. <laughs> वीडियो
Welcome to the first technical session of the conference on personality and contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir as a national and international thought leader in the 20th century. In the inaugural session, we were enlightened by different dignitaries about the personality of Dr. Muhammad Nasir. They gave some view of his times and at the same time, they brought to home the important issues which were being faced by humanity at that time. And we are now well with it that there was someone who was very much responsive to the times and to the needs of the time. And now we are in the first technical session which shall be from now 1.30 p.m. in India to 3 p.m. Uh, for one and a half hours. And we are having around five speakers. And all the speakers are very revered. And they'll be presenting their views in this session on Dr. Nasir's personal life, early days, and emergence as a national leader. We have here with us Dr. Muhammad Siddiq from Indonesia. He is the vice chairman of Board of Trustees and former chairman Divan Dawa Islamia of Indonesia. And after him, we have Dr. Nirwan Saifreen, senior lecturer, Ibn Khaldun University, Indonesia. And we have Professor Hasin Ahashia, former professor of geography, Jamia Milia Islamia, and assistant secretary general, Institute of Objective Studies. And we have Professor M. Fahim Akhtar Nadvi is professor and head department of Islamic studies, Maulana Azhar National Urdu University, Hyderabad. And we have with us Dr. Kamal Ashraf Qasmi, his assistant professor and former HOD, Aliyah University, Kolkata. So all of them will be making their presentations uh, and uh, we would like to save some time uh, for questions. And that's how this one hour and 30 minutes, if we divide one hour in uh, among the five speakers, I think they should uh, uh, complete their presentations in 10 to 12 minutes. And then definitely they will get more time when there will be questions and answers. So preferably from eight to 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, and we, this can be by self-regulation because in this uh, online mode, we may not be able to, uh, you know, every time uh, give the indication of the time. Uh, so I request all the speakers to have a self-regulation. Uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Muhammad Siddiq. Uh, he is from Indonesia and he is the vice chairman of Board of uh, Trustees and also he was earlier the chairman of Divan Dawa Islamia Indonesia. Uh, and over to you, Dr. Muhammad Siddiq. Uh, uh, please make your presentation. Thank you. Bismillah <clears throat> Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Assalatu Wassalamu, Ala Ashraf Al Anbiya Iwal Mursaleen, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabi Ajma'in. <clears throat> Honorable Chairman, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Institute of, of uh, Objective Studies for uh, taking up this uh, conference, or organizing this conference. Uh, I am privileged and have the pleasure to know Dr. Manzur Alam for the last 40 years when he was serving in in the Riyadh as advisor and minister of finance, and then he went back and established IOS in Syria, which has been, as we all know now, mashallah, a very success story. 
Uh, I have prepared a paper and I've sent it, uh, but uh, I may be reading that paper because many things have been said already about it, about uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Uh, so I'll try to highlight some of the points that have been mentioned earlier and some of the links maybe and some of the explanation maybe, perhaps, inshallah. Uh, people like uh, the, the Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, Prof. Kamal Hassan, and also the Vice President, former Vice President, Mr. Kala and Dr. Fazlon has mentioned a lot about Dr. Matnasi. Now, I think uh, I would like to mention a few things about his uh, childhood. Dr. Uh, or also the background of the country. Indonesia, as we know, is a country uh, of uh, 275 million, and it is uh, uh, laid between uh, the two continents of uh, uh, Asia continents and Australia continents, and also between two oceans, which is uh, Pacific Oceans and Indian Ocean South. So it is laid, laid very much exposed. It has three time zones from East and West. So it's not just much like from the East and West of America. <coughs> Dr. Manasseh was, was born uh, in, a, uh, in a place called Solok. Solok is in the province of West Sumatra. It's a province which has shown, or which has witnessed fierce fight against the Dutch colonial time in the 1800s, 1821 and 1837, 37 exactly. And also West Sumatra province is also known for many of the scholars who come from uh, Indonesia in regions as well as uh, statesmen of Indonesia come from uh, the province of West Sumatra, which is also called Minang or Padang. The first vice president of Indonesia, Dr. Muhammad Hatta, was also from Minang. And we, may, we have heard of all these uh, hours Besides Dr. Manasir, also Dr. Hamka and others, they also have come from Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir had uh, the privilege when he was small to get education uh, from the Dutch school, because which was limited in those days because his father was a uh, small officer at the uh, health uh, at the prisoners department. So that allowed him to go and to join government school. Of course, Alhamdulillah, because of his brilliant. And he was also chosen and to, uh, allowed to go to secondary school, uh, in, uh, which, which is for which we have to leave his hometown. He has to go to the capital of the province, uh, Padang. Uh, that was from 1923 to 1927. His, uh, his primary school was high ES, which is Holland's Indonesian school, was from 19, uh, up to from 19. Uh, 617 to, to in 1923. And then uh, after he finished the secondary school, which is called Mulo in Padang, as I mentioned in 1927, he was also privileged to have uh, that, get the chance to go to high school, which is uh, in Bandung, which is the capital of West, Sub Subat West Java province. Uh, he got permission from his parents to go uh, to Bandung and he had to stay there. And uh, the, the unique thing of Dr. Muhammad Nasir is that he, uh, besides uh, going to uh, schools, formal schools in the morning, he used to go and uh, for uh, religious education in the evening, in the afternoon, say, uh, which is called Madrasa Dinia. And in addition to that, he also used to attend or at, uh, lectures or go and visit scholars uh, in his hometown, also in Padang and also in uh, Bandung. In Bandung, there was a very prominent scholar also mentioned by uh, Tansri, uh, by Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim and also Prof. Kamal Hassan. He had one of the top tutors and mentors was Sheikh Ahmad Hassan. Ahmad Hassan is a scholar of Islam, a, Purin, a Puritanist and modernist in attitude in his uh, fiqh. And he's from, originally from Gujarat of India. He was a trader and he also left uh, organizations in Indonesia called Persatuan Islam. Unity of Islam, which is, has many education activists all over Indonesia now. So Hassan is a very famous ulama. Beside that, also Dr. Nasir got exposed to uh, teaching of Sheikh uh, Ahmad Surkati from Sudan. Uh, he was also one of the reformists and uh, puritists. You can say puritans in his approach in da'wah, in in in, in in fiqh. And also, of course, he got uh, many uh, input from the Indonesian ulamas and leaders like. Haji Umar Said Chokro Aminoto. Haji Umar Said Chokro Aminoto in Surabaya was the founder of Sharikat Islam movement. 
Syarikat Muslim Islam Movement is the beginning, is the initial of the independent of organized, organized in the independence, the movement for independence, first in the area of trade and business, and then in, in politics as well. All the, most of the political parties, uh, even the so, uh, nationalist and communist party also came out uh, from uh, this uh, Syarikat Islam because it uh, was very popular in the States. Dr. Muhammad Nasir became uh, at one point uh, leader of uh, Syarikat Islam uh, also during his time in the 20s and 30s in Bandung particularly and also other uh, big uh, center of learning and center of culture and education like Jakarta, Yogyakarta, Surabaya and Semarang. There were also a dialogue and discussions about what kind going to be the future of Indonesia, what kind of Indonesia there will be. In those discussions, uh, people like Dr. Romanus and his friends, like Haji Agus Salim, like uh, Haji uh, uh, a few other people, like Sukiman Wiro Sanjoyo, they were trying to promote Islamic social, social values, Islamic uh, in, in the, for the governance in, in politics and economics and other things. This is what Dr. Nasir is more uh, knowledgeable uh, compared to his other friends, although they also had this uh, knowledge, because they used to sit with the ulamas I mentioned to, to earlier uh, as an additional knowledge to what they got from official or formal education. So they, uh, at that time, there was what I call Young Java, Young Java, which is the Indonesian uh, Javanese youth movement. But uh, the uh, leaders of this Young Java were hesitant to accept or to discuss uh, Islamic values. So as a result, uh, Dr. Nasser and his friend established Young Islamic Bond or Islamic Youth Union, uh, where they were more free to discuss and uh, something like from Islamic perspective of what kind of Indonesia was going to be. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this has uh, played a role in uh, the, the independence movement of Indonesia. Uh, besides, uh, I can also mention that among the earlier organization in Indonesia was Muhammadiyah movement. Muhammadiyah movement was established in 1912 by Kiai Haji Ahmad Dahlan, and they have very uh, strong in education, in social work. They have hundreds of hospitals, uh, thousands of schools, and hundreds of universities all over Indonesia. Uh, they are also modernists, you can say, written organization. And the other major organization of Islam in Indonesia is Nahdatul Ulama. They have many schools in the rural areas, and they are more somewhat traditions uh, in the sense that they are very strict in the following of uh, fiqh of Shafi'iyah. Uh, these are among the major organizations, and there are many organizations which appeared, came out in various parts of Indonesia and various provinces. All of them were uh, for the fight for Indonesian independence. Indonesian independence was obtained in 19, well, was declared, was proclaimed in 1945, 17th of August, when the Japanese, which, are, which occupied Indonesia, surrendered because of the, the uh, they were attacked uh, on the bombed by the Americans. They were with the Germans in, this, in the Europe for the Second World War. During that vacuum of power before the Dutch came, Indonesian leaders announced Indonesian independence. But then the Dutch came again because they, uh, interna from the point of view of international law, perhaps, they felt that they had the right to come back to retake Indonesia. So there were five years of uh, civil war, not civil war, but a revolution war to gain independence. The Dutch finally gave up. And in 1950, before they left, before they let the Dutch left the country, they established, they established, they left Indonesia with 17 states, 17 states. So it was uh, like a unitary, it was like a federation. Why the Dutch left that? Because the Dutch wanted uh, to have some access to easy to the states in the provinces. Uh, this is one of the tasks. So when the, in 1950, January, when we, uh, the Dutch left totally, submitted uh, sovereignty of Indo over Indonesia, except one of the big major islands in the east, which is Papua, or Irian Barat, as it was known at the time. So Dr. Muhammad Nasir, as a leader and a statesman, took the initiative uh, to uh, invite all the states, to uh, persuade all those states to join the Republic into Indonesia, United, United, United Republic of Indonesia. The seven states I mentioned, one of them is the Republic of Indonesia. The other were the states established by the Dutch. Uh, the state, the Republic of Indonesia was the state which was established by the freedom fighters, the Mujahideen, uh, that was headed by Sukarno and uh, Dr. Hamad Nata and others. 
but the other states were headed by the former sultans and leaders which were blessed by the Dutch. Alhamdulillah, which uh, the, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they were able, uh, they, were, they were willing to join the United Republic of Indonesia and therefore uh, it, it was uh, through a, a, a ruling in the parliament, through a, mish, uh, a, a petition in the parliament, which was a motion in the parliament called Mosi Integral Muhammad Nasir. So therefore, as we have heard earlier, uh, Dr. Fadrizon mentioned uh, in 1950, there was second uh, proclamation of independence. That is the, pro the first, of course, the Dutch left totally. We had full independence, but that also independence in a United Republic of Indonesia, where there is which is the form of the country. So this is one of the achievements, Alhamdulillah, may achieved by Dr. Mahman Asa. In the firm of education, after uh, when he uh, came to Bandung from uh, West Sumatra, he came with the mission to study law. Law and to be a lawyer, it was a prestige at that time. But there was some event that uh, made him left this first mission because what he found out, the uh, oppression of the Dutch, especially of Indonesian farmers, who were forced to grow and cultivate certain products which are needed in Europe, making the people and the farmers are very poor. So uh, there was a miserable life of the people in general, the spirit farmers, and this made the, uh, Dr. Manasir felt that education is very important. And uh, in education, as uh, mentioned earlier by some of the speakers, Dr. Manasir from the beginning uh, believed that there's no dichotomy of education in Islam. In other words, uh, between uh, the secular education, which was promoted by the Dutch school or by the government school, also by missionaries uh, at that time was on one side and the religious school, pure religious schools on the other side. There used to be a sort of a dichotomy and looking upon, up, down upon each other. Dr. Mahan Nasir tried to bridge this gap and from the beginning said there's no dichotomy of education in Islam. In other words, there is, what is there is this uh, integration. And he, he proved this by establishing education system uh, and the foundation called Yayasan Pendidikan Islam, or Yapendis. Yapendis, uh, uh, in Yapendis schools, they teach both subjects, that is general science and also Islamic uh, studies and in combinations. And uh, this was until 1942, from 1932 to 1942, when the Japanese came and occupied Indonesia. So this, uh, from those days, Dr. Mans already started talking about integration of knowledge, something which is now being promoted and uh, being uh, by, by International Institute for Islamic Thought, that is uh, integra integration of knowledge. Uh, Dr. Mans had already started in those days that much earlier. The other point of importance is the, the role of Dr. Mans Nasir in politics. He was, uh, Mashumi, which was also mentioned earlier, was uh, formed from all the existing existing Islamic organization. The Nahdlatul Ulama leaders were among the pioneers in establishing Mashumi, then Muhammadiyah, I mentioned earlier, and also Persis, I mentioned, and many other organizations, Islamic organization, came to join, join and form a, for, for, uh, an association, initially called Majlis Islam A'la Indonesia, or High Islamic Supreme Islamic Council of Indonesia, and then this became Majlis Shura, Muslim in Russia, which in the election, first election, uh, the, uh, uh, Mashumi uh, uh, was in the same or equal with the Nationalist Party, Pen National Party. But uh, uh, Dr. Sukarno wanted Mashumi <coughs> and the National Party to join, to bring in also the Communist Party in the government, which was refused by Mashumi Party, because the Communists had also uh, tried to take coup uh, against uh, the, the, the governments when the, we were still fighting the Dutch in 1948. So because of that, uh, the, the Mashumi was banned in 1960 uh, and uh, the leaders of Mashumi, like Dr. Manas and others were uh, put in jail, um, but, uh, the given reason to become of the security, but actually because the communists was pre under pressure of the communists. Now, when uh, he was released uh, from jail by the government of Dr. Of, of the General Soharto. Uh, doctor, the, initially, there was a, an effort to rehabilitate the Mashumi party, but the military government at that time finally did, that didn't allow the chance. And instead, Dr. Nasir then, at the same time, as a matter of fact, established Dewan Dawah Islamia Indonesia. Dewan Dawah Islamia Indonesia uh, is a new approach of Tabligh, 
which is emphasizing on social uh, work, social activities, building schools, building hospitals. So not only uh, dawah uh, bilisan or by talking or tablih or khutbah, but also dawah with social uh, activities uh, by building hospitals, schools and things which are now can be seen, alhamdulillah. Uh, and also in continuation to the concept of education, which is integrated education to mention earlier, Dr. Nas, in the early part of Indonesian independence, in the early years of independence, Dr. Nas and his, and his friends established a number of Islamic universities. It was mentioned earlier in Islamic University of Indonesia in Yogyakarta. Initially it was in Jakarta, it was moved to Yogyakarta. Then also University Islam Sumatera Utara, North Sumatera Islamic University. Then University Islam Bandung, UNISBA. Then University Muslim Indonesia in Makassar. University Islam Riau in Pakanbaru, which is in Sumatera also. Then University Kalimantan, University Sultan Agung, University Islam Jakarta. These are all universities where Dr. Masih had they directly and in most of them indirectly and some of them indirectly played a role to establish because they felt, Dr. Nasir and his friend felt that they should have core of trained people to, uh, to welcome and to support the new Indonesian independence. The idea again here is was to have integrated knowledge or integrated uh, approach to education, which is joining or combining the two stream of education, the sciences and Islamic education. But this, this particular aspect remain uh, <clears throat> for some time, could not be implemented. It takes time, it takes uh, funds, it takes institutions, which then later on with the establishment of the International Islamic University in uh, uh, Malaysia and in Pakistan was very helpful because they then produced graduates, among them many Indonesian, who came and make these universities to be more Islamic in, in terms of uh, the teaching, i.e. to try to integrate the knowledge the two not a system of knowledge. So this, uh, of course, there are many other Islamic universities besides, uh, yeah, I th think I forgot to mention Universitat Vilma Khadun uh, in Bogor, and there are one also in Jakarta, the same name, but different uh, universities, uh, which also have uh, the same motivation, and also a medical college initially become University Yarsi. <coughs> Uh, Doctor, we can place. conclude now because we have other speakers also. Okay, uh, let me conclude in that case. Uh, uh, Dr. Nasir left this legacy of higher education. Now they are growing by themselves. They are managed by their own education foundation. They are not under one administration, but Alhamdulillah, they are contributing. But Dr. Nasir also established, which was mentioned earlier, also by De De Dewan Dawah Islamia Indonesia, which is again, uh, as I like to emphasize, uh, approach of dawah used on based of uh, social work and humanitarian work and this is have been growing alhamdulillah we have uh, Dewan Dawah I had the, the honor to be the chairman for five years from 2020 uh, to 2015 to, to uh, 2020 and now I am the chairman of the chairman of the board uh, of the, <coughs> the of the unit of the, of the Dewan Dawah it has branches all over the country it can be said like the third uh, la biggest largest organization in Indonesia after Nahdatul Ulama and Muhammadiyah. We are contributing like many other organizations in Indonesia in the field of education and dawah and also social and humanitarian work. I think uh, uh, as time uh, as limited, uh, I think I will end here. And thank you for the opportunity and for the giving me this chance. And also once again, uh, thanks to uh, IOS for taking the initiative. And we hope this is the beginning of further cooperation between uh, IOS, uh, in particular in India and other Indian institutions like Jamia Milia and Aligarh and others, and universities in Shia, particularly in, like Dr. Uh, like the University of Ibn Khaldun and others. So we hope there will be a visit by IOS to for Indonesia to know what are the possibilities of cooperation and, and joint cooperation, joint research, and everything. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Muhammad Siddiq, we are grateful to you for giving a very fine account uh, that uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasser, he started from home, then in a government school, and then facing all the oddities in life, he emerged as a national leader. Uh, we are grateful to you for giving that brilliant account. And we wish that you will continue to remain associated with this uh, conference. 
And now we are having with us Mr. <coughs> Nirvan Safreen. He is senior lecturer in Ibn Khaldun University, uh, Indonesia. Uh, we welcome you and uh, requesting that since uh, we have another four people, for, you know, resource persons to speak, adhering to time, you will give the main points of your presentation uh, and uh, that will be the best. And then we are publishing also the proceedings. So your full paper will be published. Uh, yeah. Over to you, Dr. Nirman Safreen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to extend my thousand uh, gratitudes to organizing committee, uh, to Dr. Henry Tanjung, uh, uh, brother Dr. Fahmi Akhtar, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Siddiq and others uh, for organizing uh, this important uh, uh, conference, which I think uh, uh, not many uh, people outside of the country uh, doing this kind of activities. Yeah, so it is uh, for us as Indonesian uh, very much uh, thankful, uh, especially to uh, Institute of Objective Studies, uh, as well as to International Institute of Islamic Thought, uh, the co-organizers, and of course uh, to University of Khaldun. Uh, before I am uh, proceeding to present uh, this sort of presentation, uh, I just would like to uh, mention that this uh, presentation is prepared by uh, me and Dr. Adian Husseini, who is the current cha uh, chairman of uh, Indonesian uh, Da'wah Council, the institution uh, established a form by uh, Dr. the late Dr. Muhammad Nasir, uh, who thought now we are uh, discussing. Uh, let me present uh, my slide uh, uh, so that we can focus on what uh, I'm going to present. Actually, some of the issues have been uh, has been discussed discussed by uh, figures or scholars before me. Yeah, also by. Uh, the keynote speakers, and I probably just mentioned a few of the things which uh, have not been probably covered and touched by uh, uh, speakers before me. Actually, Prof. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Natsir, he is a contemporary to other Muslim uh, thinkers and uh, intellectual figures, like uh, probably Maududi, yeah. Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Alal Maududi, Hassan Al Banna, they are contemporary actually. Uh, it is very unfortunate indeed that uh, the contributions and the thought of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir are not yet uh, scholarly explored and widely exposed to the Muslim world. Though the contribution that he has given to the to what called this to the landscape of uh, Muslim intellectual. Uh, also in political landscape, it is uh, very wide and profound. So that I think uh, this seminar or conference is uh, timely and very important to expose the ideas and also the uh, the practices that uh, Dr. Nasir has done during his life. Uh, many things has been mentioned about uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, but the thing that is seems to be have not been uh, mentioned is that about his characters. Uh, he is a man that is recognized for his cleverness and smartness, politeness and friendliness. He befriends with any anyone, regardless of their ideological as well as uh, religious backgrounds. Although in the parliament he can be involved or engage in the with a deep, uh, debate, probably, uh, for instance, with the communist leaders. But yet, he can laugh and drink coffee together with those people. That's why he is 
very much respected by his rivals also and also by uh, his friend of course he is uh, and uh, as mentioned by dr muhammad sidik also that uh, uh nasir we we used to call him is a uh, is a very smart and clever that's why during his schooling he always uh, got or awarded a scholarship even after he finished his high school uh in which that he he studied or his school in uh what call it in the dutch school uh, after he finished his study he was offered actually a scholarship to study abroad that is in that uh, that is in uh, in holland but he refused to uh to accept the scholarship and instead he uh, opted to be actively involved in uh, political life because he is uh, of belief that being involved in political uh, practices he he is very sure that he can empower the ummah he can uh, bring up the ummah he can uplift the life of the ummah that's why during his uh, the youth he is he was already involved in many political activities and he was one of the initiators of what he call it as young islamitian bond that is a muslim youth organization that tries to unify national movement for indonesian independence and dr muhammad nasir he is very well known for his political activities as well as for his uh, dawah activities and he after he uh, let's say uh, relinquished from the political activities then he was involved in in, in dawah he established uh, what we used to call as the one dawah uh, that's why he is All, he is only sometimes known as the politician and dai rarely uh, people come to identif- to identify him as an educationist or educational thinker and this is despite of the fact that his ideas and involvement in this field is significantly important and profound in fact as mentioned also by dr muhammad sidik earlier he is behind the establishment of many educational institutions in indonesia and he, and he also helps many students to gain scholarship to study abroad especially in the middle east and his recommendation is highly valued by higher learning institution in some muslim countries nasir indeed is a man not only of his time but he is but of a generation that come later his thinking always ahead his time many of his ideas are known to be true only after some time but even after his death yet his his ideas his thought uh, and the products that he uh, what call is that he created are still relevant to answer some of the problems that we are facing today like the issue of secularism for instance liberalism which he confronted during that time now are still relevant for us to get the answer that he before give to the challenge of his time in 1980s he initiated establishment of islamic uh, boarding schools yeah establishment of islamic boarding school but this is uh, unique because this islamic boarding school we call it as pesantren it was established they were established around university campuses and one of this uh, pesantren was established for instance in university ibn khaldun uh, we call it ulil albab uh, pesantren ulil albab uh, interestingly those who are what we call is enroll into this uh, uh, pesantren are mostly students who study secular sciences yeah before mostly from for instance uh, uh, university of uh, agriculture in bogor so they are uh, they are studied uh, secular sciences but at the same time in this uh, pesantren they are given educations or they are given knowledge about islam and then it is through this sort of pesantren a new generation i can say that a new generation of muslims intellectuals thinkers generations were born that later they they are, they are the one who moves what i mean i call it as a wave of islamic resurgence at the 1990s it is also mentioned that uh, Uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir is the one who behind the establishment of Islamic 
of many Islamic higher education, higher learning institution. Dr. Muhammad Siddiq has mentioned like Indonesia Islamic Universities, one of the oldest Islamic University in uh, Indonesia, Islamic University of Bandung, yeah, we call it UNISBA, University of Indonesian uh, of Indonesian Muslims, Makassar Umi, University of Khaldun, Sultan Agung University, and, and, and many others. And what is most important that we can learn from Dr. Nasir is that that uh, Muhammad Nasir is a man of idea and action. This is very important. He is a man of idea and action. He, not, he, he does not only have ideas, but he also practice the idea. He teaches people and educates people by examples. We can say that his life, he is an example, exemplifies the ideas that he has in his mind. So he is a teacher in the real sense of the meaning. He is a teacher in a social life, in dawah life, uh, in political lives, and in many fields that he occupies during his life. He tries to present Islamic norms and values in any position he in any position he occupies. His, his, his daily life is very simple, as Professor uh, Kamal Hassan already narrated about the story when uh, Kahin, the author of uh, his biography, mentioned about this. And he is a faithful democrat, meaning to say that he is very committed to the idea of democracy. Some people say because of his full commitment to democracy, uh, his uh, what we call this his uh, tenure as a uh, as prime minister or or let's say his office is that does not uh, long uh, does not last for long because he's very committed to the to the idea of democracy. So he's uh, he's a real teacher. He's teaching in the school. And even sometimes he sacrifices anything that he has for the sake of the ummah. That's why he, he refused uh, what we call this to all to, to, to get or to, to, to receive the scholarship simply because that he wants to work for the ummah. Yeah. So Muhammad Nasir is really a man of ideas and man, a man of thought. And like many other thinkers and, uh, and activists, Nasir is very worried about the impact of Western education upon Muslim generations. That's why in 1957, perhaps he is the one, the earlier Muslim thinkers and scholars in Indonesia, or perhaps in many uh, in uh, Muslim world, who launched a severe scholarly critic. This is a scholarly critic on secularism, yeah, and which is this is uh, the secularism is the what we call it, the seed or the cracks or the root of the problem of Western education. And what is interesting is that he did this critic in parliament. Yeah, he did it in parliament. And he wrote the paper and, and, and read the paper and launched that critic in the parliament. And this is the, the critic, this is why I said, the critic that he launched at the time are still relevant for uh, our context today. So Nazi sees that many Muslim students are well-versed in secular sciences, but ignorant of Islamic teachings. Moved by this reality, he then uh, uh, push or what call this initiates the idea of integration of knowledge, which is now become a concern of many Muslim scholars and thinkers, as mentioned also by Dr. Uh, Muhammad Siddiq. Yeah. So uh, what interesting is that, that he can talk about this integration because he himself uh, he's, he himself is trained both in Western uh, education as well as in Islamic traditions. So, so by having these backgrounds, so he can easily talk about either Western education or Islamic education. And he sees, so he, one of his writings states, when I see our schools are empty of religious education, then I intend to establish a modern education with the line uh, uh, modern, uh, modern education within the line of uh, with religion or in accordance with uh, the line of religions. So that's why when he was given opportunity to, 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 to teach in Mulo, yeah, Mulo, this is the name uh, Dutch school uh, for uh, secondary schools, he tried to infuse the elements of Islam in his teaching. And again, what is interesting again here for us is that he, he teach or he thought Islam he thought Islam not in, in Bahasa, but, but in Dutch language, because he is very well versed in foreign languages, in English, in uh, French, uh, in Latin. Uh, Prof. Kamal also mentioned about this, and rarely that we can find now uh, intellectual figure who, who are well versed uh, 
uh, with many uh, foreign languages. But uh, Prof. Natsir, yeah, uh, Dr. Natsir, he is uh, uh, is very well versed in, especially in Dutch language. Then even he can uh, communicate his ideas in Dutch language. And uh, uh, final things that uh, uh, important to mention here is that. Uh, Dr. Nasir uh, says that the foundation of Islamic uh, education should be Tawhid, which is summarized in the statement of Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And he said this is the power, this is the source of power. It is Tawhid that can be a source of power and liberation for human beings. Yeah, So uh, people can uh, have a power and uh, can liberate themselves only if it is based on Tawhid, because Tawhid means is a surrender uh, to Allah alone, not to anything. So meaning to say that he does not seek uh, the pleasure of any worldly things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that he, he will sacrifice and he will do anything simply because that he is looking for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in one of his speeches, he asked, yeah, in his writing, he said, what, what is supposed to be an aim of Islamic education? And he answered it by saying, our aim of education is to educate our children so that they can meet requirement of life, of life as men, summarized by Allah, summarized in the words of Allah, dunya. So meaning to say that uh, we educate our children so that they can live uh, uh, in this worldly life, as, but as well, but they also do not forget their their what called their portion uh, in the in the Islamic uh, uh, in the hereafter. So, meaning to say that the life should be balanced. So we prepare our children to be a balance, yeah, a balanced man, yeah. That is who can uh, what call this? Who can uh, live in this worldly life, but also at the same time he does not forget his religion. And so that our children, he said, so that our children can fulfill their duties, yeah, can fulfill their duties, yeah, as a servant of Allah to attain the level of servant of Allah, the highest level that constitutes the end of every, every human being. Meaning to say, yeah, in other words, we can say the ultimate end of Islamic education should be to produce okay. an excellent servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we Abdullah. So if the purpose of education other than this, then there's something that is wrong with our education. That's why uh, we should concentrate to produce our generation who are uh, very uh, worried or very, uh, what call it, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than worried about the worldly life. That is that I can present, probably perhaps that can be beneficial for all of us. Then one thing that is very important also, how we can emulate how can we emulate and also uh, apply Dr. his Nirvan, ideas? Dr. now please conclude. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, shukran. Jazakumul khairan kathiran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa yeah, That was uh, Dr. Nirvan, sir, friend. I think he gave a very brilliant and clear presentation about uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir and he presented him as a very exemplary educationist and ultimately being a very faithful democrat and a person of sacrifices and the best of it is the integration of knowledge which he advocated uh, for producing the best of the uh, people in the world who, who are obeying and obedient to Almighty. Uh, so that was a very brilliant presentation. We are grateful to you. Jazakallah for this effort. And uh, uh, it's uh, such presentation which make really the conference a success. You have done a lot. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Nirvan. You're welcome. And now we have with us uh, Sister... Uh, uh, professor Hasina Hashia, she is a professor of geography uh, and also assistant secretary general of uh, IOS, uh, that's the Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, I know that by nature she is very meticulous about things and then also knows that unqualified 15 minutes uh, she can speak and then uh, give time to others. Now, over to you, Professor Dr. Hasina Hashir. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. to all Indian participants and also uh, the participants across the Indian borders. It is a great privilege for me to speak on the topic of this great <clears throat> leader of Islamic thought named Professor uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir. <clears throat> My topic is the life and contribution of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, but uh, I want to consider because much has been talked about his life and about, <coughs> about his other aspects of his life. I want to concentrate on the uh, his concept of statehood because I have read some of his writing some of his books which are um, on the statehood uh, i was very much fascinated by his ideas by his thought process so i have gone through uh, his uh, uh, writings his books uh, number one which are on statehood capta selected if it is in two volumes islam and free reasoning islam as the foundation of state islam as an ideology islamic culture in a historic perspective and another the unity of religion and state this book i have read extensively uh, i came after uh, going through his readings i came to know that he was a great leader of having a Islamic thought and Islam was everything for him. I came to know. This is because he real realized and believes that the man's existence and activities in this world is none other than the worship of God Almighty. Worshiping God, however, is not limited only to activities like prayer, fasting, hajj, uh, zakah, like the basic needs of Islam, but includes much more than this. Every good deed which is performed for the sake of God can be considered as worship or ibadah. It is only by fulfilling these duties that a believer will lead a correct life in this world and be happy in the next world. Thus he becomes a true worshiper of God. Islam, according to Nasir, is therefore not merely concerned with the relationship between man and God, but also between man and man, and even between man and his environment and nature. So by saying this, he has, he has given a whole scenario in this. The worship, besides worship, man has, uh, should know, he should lead his life with another uh, in his community, in his uh, this physical environment, in the social environment, and also uh, besides worshiping the God. He has given the complete practical way of life. According to him, Islam is indeed much more than a system of theology. It is a complete civilization. This means that Islam deals with all aspects, all aspects of human life, including economics, education, politics, and other sciences also. Islam is not merely an ideology, but it is also a way of life that should be realized in the real world by applying the Islamic law or Sharia in our daily activities. In order to apply the Sharia fully, Muslims should possess freedom. The freedom to practice the Sharia without feeling frightened and threatened. Freedom also signifies the freedom from exploitation of man by man. In line with this thought, Dr. Nasser further states, basically Islam is teaching, uh, Islamic teachings are a revolution, namely the revolution in destroying and fighting against all kinds of exploitation. If they do not have much real freedom, then establishing or having a state becomes a necessity or even an obligation. However, it should be always borne in mind that establishing the state is not an end itself. It is only a means to achieve the Islamic objectives. Emphasizing the essence of the state, Dr. Nasser remarks 
the state appears essentially and basically constitute an integral part of Islam. Its objective is complete implementation of the law of God, whether relating to the individual or community, community life, whether regarding life in this world or in the next world. He further mentions that Islam has rules or laws on statehood and embraces the civil and criminal laws. To apply the laws, it is undeniable that we need the institution who, whose authority would ensure the application of the of the laws. Therefore, the existence of the state is necessary. It is essential. Have our have the state. Actually, if we see in general, we we look back to the first half of the 20th century. We observe that this idea of Islamic State started uh, spreading almost in all parts of Muslim world, from Morocco in the West and uh, Indonesia in the East. This spirit of right of self-determination, which was rooted in the pan-Islamism, kindled by Jamaluddin Afghanism in the hearts of Indonesian Muslim intellectuals, and Dr. Nasir was one of them. Dr. Nasir uh, has also proposed making Islam as the basis of a state for the Republic of Indonesia. He has based his ideas on certain solid principles, like he has mentioned in his books that the majority of Indian, uh, this Indonesian population was Muslim. So they need an Islamic state. The, these people, these are the conscious people. They, are, they were successful in driving out the foreign colonial rule, foreign uh, co colonial establishment and they need the and they have fought on the, for this uh, they, they have fought for the uh, for their freedom on the lines of religion so their religion should be governed and it should be evident from their works and deeds so uh, it, it should be part of our lives he mentions that it should be religion should be part of our life struggle both in the social and political fields. Uh, now, Dr. Nasser, what he means by law, implementation of laws, what he means by law, it is not the man-made law, but the law of God, namely Sharia, which is derived from the Quran and Sunnah, thus the state he wants is the one based on the law of God. The kind of state he believes should be based on Islam, a democratic state based on Islam are the, uh, he, he he further says that it should be a democratic state based on Islam as way of life. There are only two choices. He then mentions the uh, the scenario that the, as as a uh, as a, because Islam is a way of life. We have only two choices before us. One is the religion. Another is secularism. He. Uh, has named, he calls secularism as La Dinia and describes that uh, secularism does not have a strong and solid basis, so he opposes the idea of secularism. He proposes for the uh, for the state based on Islam. Now his philosophy of state. What was the foundation of uh, uh, philosophy foundation uh, according to him of the state? He explains the foundation that can build and guide the people materially and spiritually so as to be a nation that has morality or in, or in modern terms a civilized society or civilized people. People who are able to manage themselves without being controlled by the government. He further states such uh, that there is only one state philosophy that can shoulder such a heavy task, namely the state philosophy and it should be based on the belief 
belief in and obedience to the sovereignty of God as the absolute source of law and the values of life. He believes that if the state philosophy is not based on the sovereignty of God, so the formulations that the parliament will result and produce will merely be dry grains of sand which are meaningless. The sovereignty of God is over and above all kinds of worldly sovereignty. In this respect, Dr. Nasir uh, seems to be of the opinion uh, of uh, Maulana Madhudi Saab, who was, who was at that time, who was also advocating for these type of ideas. According to Maulana Madhudi, Quran says that sovereignty all, in all aspects is not only for, is, is only for God. He alone is the creator and the real ruler of this universe. Uh, so to him belongs the sole right of being the sovereign uh, sovereign and uh, uh, right of being sovereign over all this creation. By emphasizing the position, is the position of Islam as the philosophy of the state, Dr. Nasser does not mean to make the state theocratic. Theocratic means the direct government of priests who govern people on behalf of God. According to him, in Islam, priesthood is not recognized. Therefore, he adds the state which is based on Islam uh, is is not theocratic, it is, it is a democratic state. It is not a secular state. It is the Islamic democratic state. If one insists on giving it a general name, perhaps the state which is based on Islam by theistic democracy, he gives it a unique name, the theistic democracy, which means that uh, theistic democracy See here means all rules and regulations stipulated by the government should be in accordance with the divine law or Sharia and their application be based on the democratic system. Nasir does not deny that the Quran does not completely and fully deal with politics, say statehood. Uh, he then further states that uh, the affairs, he further states the affairs which are subject to change in according to time and space. Now he, those which are, uh, in, which are subject to change should be achieved through another means. What are those other means? Nasser points out only the essential and fundamental tenets which are are in accordance with uh, the very nature of very nature or fitra of man. These tenants are eternal and immutable and are applicable in all places and time, in the past and in the present. Basically, himself uh, basing, he is basing himself on the solid basic teachings. Man should use his rational faculty and ishtihad in all fields of of life in accordance with the demands of the time and the space. So he provides a practical solution, he, which is applicable, which is always uh, for, the, for the people, for, for all people, for all times, and is practicable uh, for whole uh, for whole world. Now, uh, now uh, there were at that time, that there was a debate going on in the Muslim world. Who should be, what, what should be the name of a ruler? Or what should be the kingdom or the state named as? So according to Maulana Madhuri Sahib, he was advocating for uh, the kingdom or the state as the caliphate. And the ruler should be named as the caliph. But what was the opinion of the Dr. Nasir? Dr. Nasir does not object to whether title is used to designate the head of the state, be it president, king, caliph, emir al muminin etc. He firmly maintains that whether or the head of the state calls himself, caliph is not the main concern. What is the most important is that the head of the state who is mandated 
accepted as the ulul amr of the muslim ummah is capable and ready to guarantee that islamic laws relating to state affairs can run well in theory as well as in practice now another important feature of uh, dr nasir's thought concerning statehood is his idea on shura or democracy my uh, uh, the, the speaker who was speaking before me he also mentioned the his idea on democracy he is quoting the verses of holy quran and suggested that the islamic government should be based on the principles of shura this is according to him because islam has affirmed that the value of consultation in governing life either the life of society or the life of the state should be preserved supported and encouraged for it is necessary in the islamic teachings that in dealing with the people the ruler should have acknowledgement and support from the ruled he has to consult on everything concerning the life and interests of people from this statement it can be inferred that according to nasir dr nasir the head of the state is chosen through an electoral system like prevailing in those days in in uh, many islamic countries however here we want to clarify what dr nasil really means by democracy in islam it is true that islam advocates a democratic system but according to dr nasir what is meant by democracy here is that islam gives people the right to criticize remind and correct an autocratic government if criticism and reminders are not enough islam gives people the right to abolish the autocratic system using using mass uh, power and if necessary also the force using the force also in addition he also states that islam is an anti dictatorship anti absolutism and anti anarchy system uh, he also explains that this does not mean that in an islamic government all of it is affairs are fully given to the decision of the consultative uh, consultative assembly here now i want to mention i want to mention his idea of democracy because he does not advocate for the 100% democracy nor for 100% uh, this autocracy he has given a system combination of both of these that is a unique system which is practical for all times and for all regions of the world according to nasir only the ways of carrying out the law islam is an understanding a belief that has its own principles and characters islam neither needs 100% democracy nor is 100% autocracy islam is he mentions in his books islam is islam and he tries to reconcile to opposite system the dictator dicto uh, dicta dictatorial and the democratic matlab uh, dictatorship and also the democratic system he wants to combine these two he concludes if considered as a synthesis islam is a synthesis which gives enough room for the evolution of whatever needs evolving and for the radicalism for whatever needs to be radical unfortunately he neither gives a clear explanation nor detailed guide as to how this unique reconciliation can be applied in the government <laughs> unlike maududi sahab and abdul qadir kurdi who strongly believe that an islamic system of government there should be a single party islamic government islamic government party but dr nasir is of the opinion that to maintain and preserve the government on the democratic path political parties are un 
questionably needed. He insisted that as long as there is freedom to establish parties, there is democracy. So he has explained everything. How can we implement, implement the democratic way of system in the, in the uh, world? And how is the, what is the model? And what are the characteristics which are applicable everywhere and for all time? He, he again and again mentions the time and space so he is giving a practical solution for the future characteristics of the state. Uh, thank you very much. These were my uh, ideas about the concept of statehood of uh, a great thinker, Prof. Dr. Mohammad Nasir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Professor Hasina Hashia. You gave a very brilliant version uh, on the ideas of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir on state. And uh, you did refer to various uh, related concepts. And then ultimately, uh, it appeared that he was working for a synthesis. Uh, and also, you compared it with the thoughts of other uh, thinkers of the times. Uh, yes, uh, it needs more consideration, and at the same time, uh, you know, time change and changes are very important, and we have to adjust uh, ourselves to the times, uh, and at the same time, uh, we have to think that how the thought of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir and his contemporary thinkers and now the people, how they are thinking with more experience about the future of the state, what it should be and uh, how it can be and uh, how modern democracy can be different from uh, other democracy if there can be any other module. These are very relevant questions to be considered. Now we have with us one of the very prolific scholars uh, from uh, Malan Azar National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Uh, he is uh, Professor M. Fahim Akhtar Nadi, <coughs> Professor and Head Department of Islamic Studies. Uh, and uh, his topic is uh, Prime Minister Dr. Muhammad Nasir, uh, Mujahid Azadi wa Mujahid Islam. Uh, so uh, he was uh, uh, in both in Islam and uh, both in national affairs that way. So we have, I think the best we can have is uh, Professor Fahim Akhtar Nadvi. Over to you, Fahim Saab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to an Institute of Objective Studies, New Delhi, and University Ibn Khaldun, Indonesia and International Institute of Islamic Thought USA for organizing this international conference and also for giving me this opportunity to speak on Dr. Nasir and mm -hmm. his contribution to the nation Indonesia as well as to the cause of Islam. <clears throat> I have prepared my uh, presentation in Urdu language, the language of uh, our country. And I think that this presentation uh, may be a bit uh, beneficial for Urdu audience of this conference. Uh, I will try to finish. Uh, it is very short. I will try to finish in the time uh, given to me. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismi Sadiq in this me. عالم اسلام کے افق پر بالعموم اور انڈونیشیا کی فضاؤں پر بالخصوص اسلام کا جو تابندہ ستارہ جگمگاتا رہا اور جس کی تابانی نے ملکوں اور انسانوں کو سرشار اور شاد کام کیا اس کا نام ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر ہے جہد و عمل اور فکر و ہمت بھری داستان زندگی رکھنے والے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے سر بلندی اسلام کے واحد مقصد کے ساتھ اپنی ذات کو ایسا استوار کر لیا تھا کہ اسی محور کے گرد ان کے شب و روز ان کی فکر و تحریر 
اور ان کی تعلیمی سماجی اور سیاسی سرگرمی گھومتی رہی عالم اسلام نے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کی خدمات کا اعتراف کیا اور رب کائنات نے انہیں دنیا میں بھی وہ مقام اعزاز اور عہدے عطا کیے جہاں سے وہ اپنے مقصود حیات کو مزید بہتر طور پر بار آور کر سکے ڈاکٹر ناصر کی پیدائش انڈونیشیا میں ہوئی گھرانہ دیندار اور والد محترم جناب محمد ادریس صاحب انڈونیشیا کے ممتاز علماء دین میں تھے گھر کی عمدہ دینی تربیت اور دین پسند اسکولوں میں ابتدائی اور ثانوی تعلیم کے بعد اعلیٰ تعلیم حاصل کی اور تدریس سے وابستہ ہو گئے ابتدائی سے دینی ذہن اور مقصد سے وابستگی پائی تھی تو تربیتی اور سیاسی سرگرمیوں سے وابستہ ہونے لگے نائنٹین ٹوینٹی ٹو میں مسلم نوجوانوں کی تنظیم کی ایک شاخ کے صدر ہوئے اور پھر ملک کی راجدھانی آ کر آزادی کی آزادی ملک کی جد جہد میں شامل ہو گئے دوسری عالمی جنگ کے بعد آزادی وطن کی گفت و شنید کا حصہ رہے اور آزادی ملنے کے بعد پارلیامنٹ کے ممبر بنے نائنٹین فورٹی سکس میں وہ وزیر تعلیم بنائے گئے اور چار برس اس منصب پر رہ کر اپنے ملک اور عوام کی خدمت انجام دیتے رہے اور اسلامی غلبہ و اشاعت کی فکر کو راسخ اور نافذ بنانے کی کوشش کرتے رہے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے سیاسی سرگرمی کو منظم کرتے ہوئے مسلمانہ نے انڈونیشیا کی مجلس شورا پارٹی بنائی جو معصومی کہلاتی ہے اور ستمبر نائنٹین ففٹی میں وہ ملک کے پانچویں وزیر اعظم کے عہدے پر فائز ہو گئے لیکن ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کے لیے عہدہ اور منصب مقصود نہیں تھا بلکہ اسلامی کاز کی تکمیل مقصود اور عہدے اس کے لیے وسیلہ تھے صدر انڈونیشیا سکارنو نے اپنے سیکولر ایجنڈے کو جب بالجبر ملک اور اس کے تعلیمی اداروں پر تھوپنا چاہا اور تعلیم گاہوں اور مذہبی اداروں کو ان کے قبول کرنے پر مجبور کیا اور آمریت کی بدترین شکل اپناتے ہوئے سنگل پارٹی سسٹم میں صرف اپنی ہی سیاسی پارٹی کو باقی رکھنا چاہا تو صدر سکارنو کے ان آمرانہ اقدامات کے شدید مخالفین میں ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر پیش پیش تھے اور ان کی تحریری اور عملی سرگرمی پورے شباب پر تھی چنانچہ سات ماہ کی قلیل مدت میں ہی اپریل نائنٹین ففٹی ون میں ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے وزارت عظمہ کا عہدہ چھوڑ دیا اور اپنے اسلامی موقف کی وجہ سے پابند سلاسل کر دیے گئے سکارنو کے دور صدارت میں چار برس تک ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے جیل میں قید زندگی گزاری لیکن ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کی قربانی رنگ لائی اور انڈونیشیا میں اسلامی روح برقرار رہی حاضرین ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے نہ صرف اپنے ملک کے مسلمانوں کو متحد اور اسلام سے وابستہ رکھنے کے لیے جد و جہد کی اسلامی فکر کی ترسیخ کے لیے کتابیں اور تحریریں لکھیں مختلف تنظیمیں اور ادارے قائم کیے اور متعدد اداروں کی سرپرستی کی بلکہ عالم اسلام کے ساتھ بھی انہوں نے گہرے روابط استوار کیے بیرون ملک کے دورے کیے اور عالمی اداروں میں اسلامی کاز کے لیے سرگرم شرکت و جد و جہد کی چنانچہ عالم اسلام کے اس وقت کے موقر ادارہ رابطہ عالم اسلامی کی مجلس تاسیسی کے رکن بنائے گئے نائنٹین سیونٹی سکس میں مکہ مکرمہ کی مجلس اعلیٰ عالمی مساجد کے ممبر ہوئے نائنٹین ایٹی سیون میں آکسفورڈ سینٹر فار اسلامک اسٹڈیز لندن کی تاسیسی کمیٹی کے ممبر ہوئے اور نائنٹین ایٹی سکس میں کونسل آف انٹرنیشنل اسلامک چیریٹیبل آرگنائزیشن کوئٹ کے بانی ممبر بنے اور اس طرح ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے اپنے ملک کی سرگرم قیادت و خدمت کے ساتھ مسلمانہ نے عالم اسلام کے مسائل اور اسلامی کاز میں اپنی بھرپور شرکت بھی جاری رکھی ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کی نے اسلامی فکر کی خدمت و اشاعت کے لیے تحریر اور تصنیف کا بھی سہارا لیا اور کثرت سے تحریریں لکھیں وہ اسلامی موضوعات پر لکھتے تھے اور اپنے وقت کے مسائل پر گفتگو کرتے ہوئے اسلامی موقف کی مضبوطی کو نمایاں کرتے تھے ان کے موضوعات میں اسلام کے سیاسی موقف اور اصل حاضر میں اسلامی شریعت کے مکمل اور جامع تطویق کے مباحث شامل ہوتے وہ اس عقیدے پر پختہ یقین رکھتے اور اسے مضبوطی کے ساتھ پیش کرتے تھے کہ ملک کی سیاست اسلامی اصولوں پر استوار ہوگی 
اور زندگی کے تمام میدانوں میں اسلامی شریعت کی تطبیق ہی انسانیت کے مسائل کا حل ہے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے اس فکر اسلامی کو پھیلانے کے لیے کثرت سے کتابیں لکھیں اور مختلف زبانوں میں ان کی اشاعت کرائی آپ کی ایسی فورٹی فائیو کتابیں کتاب کے منظر عام پر آئے اور لوگوں کے ہاتھوں ہاتھ تک پہنچے ڈاکٹر ناصر نے مختلف زبانیں سیکھیں اور ان میں اپنی خیالات کا اظہار کیا ان میں عربی انگریزی فرنچ ڈچ جرمن اور لیٹن شامل ہیں اور زبانوں پر عبور کی وجہ سے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے اپنے وقت کے الہادی اعتراضات اور تبشیری حملوں کے بھی بھرپور جوابات دیے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کی سرگرم اسلامی خدمات اور کاموں کی وجہ سے عالم اسلام کے موقر ایوارڈ شاہ فیصل ایوارڈ سے آپ کو نائنٹین ایٹی میں نوازا گیا اور یہ حسن اتفاق ہے کہ عالم اسلام کے ممتاز و باوقار اور بے مثال اسلامی و فکری کام کرنے والی ہمارے ملک کی شخصیت مفکر اسلام حضرت مولانا سید ابو الحسن علی ندوی رحمہ اللہ کو بھی ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کے ساتھ ہی مشترکہ طور پر شاہ فیصل ایوارڈ دیا گیا اور مولانا علی میاں کی پیدائش نائنٹین فورٹین سے چھ برس پہلے نائنٹین ایٹ میں پیدا ہونے والے ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر نے مولانا علی میاں ہی کی وفات نائنٹین نائنٹی نائن سے چھ ہی برس پہلے نائنٹین نائنٹی تھری میں وفات پائی یہ عدیب اتفاق ہے دونوں کی پیدائش اور وفات کا اور اس طرح اس طرح خدمات اسلام کے ایوارڈ میں شریک دونوں ممتاز عالمی فکری اور علمی شخصیات نے پوری بیسویں صدی پر محیط اپنی خدمات اسلامی سے انسانی دنیا کو مستفید کیا ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کو ملیشیا کی دو یونیورسٹیز اور لبنان کی ایک یونیورسٹی سے ڈاکٹریٹ کی اعزازی ڈگریاں دی گئیں اور پھر خود انڈونیشیا کے ملک نے دو ہزار آٹھ میں ٹو تھاؤزن ایٹ میں انہیں نیشنل ہیرو آف انڈونیشیا کا خطاب دیا حاضرین ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر معاصر دور کی عالمی شخصیات میں ایک محترم اور نمایاں مقام رکھتے ہیں ان کی خدمات کے گہرے نقوص ثبت ہوئے ہیں انہوں نے سیاسی وزن قائم کیا اور نوجوان نسل کو تیار کیا اور اپنی تصنیفی خدمات سے اسلامی فکر کا مواد فراہم کر دیا ڈاکٹر محمد ناصر کی یہ خدمات زندہ اور تابندہ رہیں گی اور نسلیں ان سے مستفید ہوتی رہیں گی اللہ تعالیٰ انہیں جزائے خیر نصیب فرمائے اور ان کے قائم کیے ہوئے نقوص سے امت مسلمہ کو ہمیشہ فائدہ پہنچاتا رہے وآخر دعوانا ان الحمدللہ رب العالمین جزاک اللہ پروفیسر ایم فہیم اکتر کو ہمیشہ فائدہ پہنچاتا رہے وآخر دعوانا ان الحمدللہ رب العالمین جزاک اللہ پروفیسر ایم فہیم اکتر ندوی صاحب Uh, as uh, his uh, presentation was uh, more in Urdu, uh, I may say that uh, that presentation was a very uh, great and uh, of great importance. Thank you. Uh, he talked about uh, some aspects of the life of uh, Dr. Nasir. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, his... Uh, a contribution to thought as well as uh, to studies, I should say, in exploring the concepts. And he also mentioned his achievements about uh, the awards uh, uh, and, and, and then also uh, at the same time, uh, he, he did present him a man of struggle uh, that he could not afford to live uh, with suffocation, if I call it. Uh, he could express himself uh, and and then that's how uh, we can tell him that he did express himself uh, the best one can uh, and uncompromisingly he came forward with his uh, views and opinions uh, and that's uh, how things happened. Uh, so uh, now I am, uh, if there will be questions later on, uh, we'll take them. Uh, but before that, I request Dr. Kamal Ashraf Kasmi Saab. He is uh, uh, at uh, Aliyah University, Kolkata, India. 
Uh, he will speak on Dr. Muhammad Nasser life and contributions. Uh, he is a, a professor there. Uh, so we invite Dr. Kamal Ashraf Kasmi Saab to kindly come and make your presentation. Fahim Saab, Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukriya wa Thank you, IOS. Give me this opportunity. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Natsir, Life and Contribution, my article. Dr. Muhammad Natsir, 17 July 1908, 6 February 1993, was an Islamic scholar and politician. He was Indonesian's fifth prime minister. Give me only five minutes, inshallah. Finally. While still in high school, Natsir became involved in journalism. In 1929, he wrote two articles published in the Aljamin Indi Sech Dabal entitled Quran and Evangelic. The Quran and the Evangelicals and Muhammad as Prophet. He also collaborate with other thinkers, thinks, thinkers to publish the newspaper Pamela Islam, Defender of Islam from 1929 to 1935 and wrote extensively about his views on the religion for Pandiji Islam, Banner of Islam, Podomen Maisarakat, Guide for the People and the Banner the and All Manner, the Torch. Beside writing, Dr. Natsir founded Pandik, Pandidikan Islam, Islamic Education, a private school in 1930. The school was shut down after the Japanese occupation of Indonesia. Prime Minister Natsir began to associate with well-known scholars of Islam like Agus Salim and in the mid-1930s, he, he took Salim's place in discussing the relationship between Islam and the state with future President Sukarno in 1938. He enrolled as, as a member of Party Islam Indonesian, the Indonesian Islamic Party, and become the chairman of the Bandung branch for 1940 until 1942 he was he was also employed a corporation as the bandung bureau head of education until 1955 during the japanese occupation he joined majlis al ala indonesia changed to majlis shura muslim indonesian letter and become one of its chairman from 1955 until the party was banned. After the problem proclamation of Indonesian independence, he became a central Indonesian National Committee member on 3 April 1950. He proposed a mention called Mosil Integral Natsir that united Indonesia after an agreement which divided Indonesia to 17 states. Soon after words in become <coughs> prime minister, in, influenced by his role as the head of Mas Masumi, he served until 1951 in the guide democracy era. He opposed the government and joined the 
revolutionary government of the republic of indonesia as a result he is arrested and imprisoned in malang from 1962 until 1964 he was released by the new order government in july 1966 after his release release from prison natsir become increasingly involved with organization re- related to islam including the majlis taasisi rabita al islami and majlis al ala al alami lil masajid both in makka the oxford center for islamic studies in england and the world muslim congress in karachi pakistan in new order era he formed yaisan dewan dakwa islamia indonesia he also organized government policy like when he signed the petisi 50 on 5 may 1980 which caused him to be banned from going overseas political and views according to dr natsid his politics were religious motivated with ayat 56 of the adhariya as juris justification his goal as a politician was to ensure that the muslim community lived in a state where islamic <coughs> teaching applied in the life of in individual society and the state of the republic of indonesia he also fought for human rights and the uh, modernization of islam unlike the secular anti communist sukarno who gave religious as an entity separated for the nation natsir believed that the separation of church and state was not applicable in to indonesia as he saw it was an intrinsic part of this culture and one of the main reasons they fought for the independence to support his position is of 10 quoted william montmere what saying that islam is not just a religion but an entire culture <laughs> writing dr mohammad natsir published 45 books and a mo- monograph dr and kamal saab can you conclude now we have start another session also yes 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 ha yeah yeah mai apna in uh, in 1980 he received award from king faisal foundation in Acad- academic he received doctorate in honorary degree from islamic university of lebanon in 1967 and he uh, died on 14 march 1993 in jakarta thank you thank you doc sir uh, very great and uh, uh, we are since we are publishing the proceedings so that will be covered there uh, i was uh, trying to save 2 3 minutes uh, if anybody has questions if any of the participants has questions to any of the speakers uh, or any clarification you want please ask uh and then abu, we abu, we'll, abu ali please ask ask your question abu ali so we can share i have a very little question not question but uh, i would like to know mm-hmm. the meaning of prasantan and dr nirwan has mentioned this word in his presentation 
Prasantarn. What is Prasantarn? Perhaps it is in Indonesian language. Islamic school. Islamic school. Doctor Nirwan is not here. Okay. Doctor Nirwan is not here. It's left. But no. Pesantren, uh, I think Pesantren is a boarding Islamic school. Is in it, India, Pesantren is madrasa. Yeah, it is boarding. Basically, it's a boarding. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Pesantren. The next speaker will be able to explain Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. He's a graduate of one of the famous Pesantren of Indonesia. Pesantren Gontor. He will yeah, I think uh, we, we should uh, let us not upon the time in another session uh, we are very much timely and i am grateful to all the speakers uh, they did make their presentations uh, very well in the given time and in that uh, uh, dr mohammad siddiq uh, from indonesia uh, he did kept uh, to the time and he told us everything about uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, his uh, voyage from a government school up to the Prime Minister. Uh, we are grateful to him and uh, I think uh, the life of uh, 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 Muhammad Nasir is worth exploring and uh, uh, we have to appreciate that he has done it all in a uh, very a good way in an academic fashion and then we had presentation from Dr. Nirvan uh, and he described uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir an exemplary educationist uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, definitely a person who wanted education uh, must be there uh, with a purpose and the purpose is to produce the best of the human beings on earth and then we had uh, a uh, very important presentation from Professor Hasina Hashia, who spoke on very specific aspect of the concept of state. Uh, as state is very important in the modern polities and political systems, uh, so various issues related to democracy, different forms of democracy, and then adherence to faith or adherence to religion, so many issues are there. Uh, they need to be uh, addressed and they need to be understood better. And at the same time, there was a good reference to Ijtihad, that he was in favor of uh, Ijtihad that keeps the things alive. Uh, and anybody who ever talks of Ijtihad, he cannot be a stubborn uh, thinker. Uh, so he leaves, speak, uh, leaves space for uh, uh, promotion of thought, ideas, systems, uh, and, and that's how uh, people can in every age work for a synthesis of the thought and system. Uh, and definitely his idea of self-determination is very much relevant to the world today as well. Uh, and that was mentioned. And then uh, Dr. Professor Fahim Akhtar Nadvi Saab, uh, he talked of uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir about his struggle for independence of his country, establishment of parties, then uh, his uh, uh, this uh, uh, dream of uh, accom accomplishment about Islamic laws. Uh, that that was his idea, and at the same time he did not want to impose any uh, anybody's ideas to any other person, and that's how uh, he had to. Uh, go against the autocracy and live uh, in jail also. Uh, and then we had uh, a presentation from Dr. Kamal Ashraf. That was a very good uh, presentation and he gave a very good beginning of it uh, that uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, he was uh, a journalist at a very young age. Uh, that means he was very sensitive to things and that's how he might have been very well thinking about uh, the, the, the society, the oppressed in the society, the external and internal influences uh, which shape, which influence the system and make it sometimes coercive, uh, sometimes damaging, sometimes harmful. And that's how we had a very good session and I congratulate all of them but conclude with this idea that there is a lot to be further understood about Dr. Muhammad Nasir and from all these approaches which our presenters had. 
uh, we have to go ahead and then find uh, a leader in him uh, who was uh, responding uh, to situations, to thoughts, to ideas and needs of the people as a natural human being. And that's how uh, it was said that he was not only thinking of his own self, but also he was thinking of uh, the people, the state, the environment, uh, and like that. So that's how uh, uh, we would say that uh, he deserved many awards and that's how he was also awarded with Shah Faisal Award also. Uh, and, and that his, his life is a good example for uh, the next generation to uh, you know, get uh, some light from that and to get some understanding from that and work for a better future of humanity. With these words, uh, I would uh, say that the organizers have done a very good task uh, that to understand different personalities, we get the whole time, the whole history in front of us. And uh, that's, uh, that's a very good approach to history, a good approach to ideologies, a good approach to synthesis of thoughts, and a good approach to think for humanity better. And uh, with these words, I would say that God give us uh, strength, God give us understanding that we make knowledge uh, a beneficial, most beneficial uh, for, for the humanity the way you want uh, us to do. And at the same time, uh, when uh, uh, Muhammad Nasir was described not only the man of ideas, but man of action as well. So give us the uh, uh, a, a capacity uh, that we not only know the ideas, we also act on those ideas. And uh, Allah bless you all and all of us and wish this conference a great success. Over to next session, and the next session will be uh, chaired by uh, one of the very brilliant uh, scholars and friends. Uh, he is Dr. Henry Tanjung. He is with us since morning. Uh, rather, he is with us uh, even before that. Uh, and uh, he is the Vice Director, Postgraduate School, Ibn Khaldun University, Bogor, Indonesia. Uh, and the theme of this session is Dr. Nasser's contribution to nation building in Indonesia and understanding of international political scenario. Over to you, Dr. Henry Tanjung. Kindly you. take Thank the you. floor and conduct the whole thing. Wherever Thank necessary, you. you can tell me. Thank, Thank you. you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Wani. Shukriya, shukriya. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I think I want to uh, give some brief about Nasir's personality before we come into the Nasir's contribution. Because in the first session, we discussed about Nasir's personality. Uh, what the interesting thing when uh, I talked to the daughter of Dr. Muhammad Nasir, she said that past leadership was different from current leadership. In the past, leaders were modest in the terms of wealth, honest, and very much in love with their people. It was told once a friend of Dr. Nasir ran out of money to return to Bajan Masin. Then he came to the Prime Minister's office. He came to the office of Pak Nasir. Pak Nasir admitted that he had no money, but provided a solution by visiting the magazine Hikmah Hile. Now the question is, can we imagine that the current Prime Minister does not have money just for the cost of transportation? Uh, this is a very uh, big question for us. A simple principle of life has been the life guidelines of past leaders in their struggles. They live with the people in an economic situation that is not much different from the people. They seem to unite with the, with the pulse of people's economic life. There is no motive for enriching themselves. 
This is what makes them loved by their people. Now, their children live simply, live in simple houses. This is an indicator that what they fought for in the past was actually for the Ummah, not for themselves, not for their families. Besides living a simple life, Nasir's morality and behavior are also very commendable. He never bulldozed his political opponents by justifying any means. Even in, in, the, in the 50s, in the canteen of the House of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia, he and Dn Aidit, uh, the, the leader of the Communist Party, laughed together while drinking coffee, even though everyone knew his political attitude was very opposite. It seems that love for the world is what causes the behavior of some Muslim leaders today to be dishonest anymore. The truth is not upheld because they have eaten bribes. Corruption is difficult to eradicate because the ambition is to become rich while taking office. Falsehood does not dare to be confronted because the people on the side of the vanity have chalked their mouth with money. If things are like this, then the enemies of Islam will no longer be afraid of the Muslim. Now, what are the Dr. Nasir's contribution to nation building in Indonesia and his understanding of international political scenario? Four speakers will discuss this topic. First speaker, Dr. Fad Bizot, chairman of the House Committee for Interparliamentary Cooperation, the House Representative of the Republic of Indonesia, on topic Islam and Democracy, Muhammad Nasir Political Thought. Second, Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid, Vice Chairman of People Consultative Assembly, Republic of Indonesia, on topic Dr. Muhammad Nasir's contribution to nation building in Indonesia. The third, Dr. Sajad Ahmad Pade, doctorate from Department of Islamic Studies, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, on topic Fair Fairness of Nation Building and Visaging in the Personalities of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and Abdul Kalam Azad, a study. And the last one, Mr. Khaizaka Nas, Research Scholar, Department of Islamic Studies, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, on topic Dr. Muhammad Nasir's perspective to Islamic culture and in Indonesia. Uh, because I cannot contact uh, Dr. Van Lizon, so I think we come to Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid to present uh, his paper about Dr. Nasir. Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. Thank you, Dr. Hedi Tanjung and brothers and sisters in the Institute of the Objective Studies in India, brothers and sisters in the Islamic University of Ibn Khaldun in Indonesia, brothers and sisters in the International Institute of Islamic Saudi and United States of America, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, assalatu wassalamu ala qa'idina wa kudwatina rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Alhamdulillah, and thank you for holding this important international conference for thinking and thanking Dr. Muhammad Nasir for all of his contribution for Indonesia, for Islamic Ummah, and for international community also. And allow me here to deliver my paper about Dr. Muhammad Nasir's contribution to nation building in Indonesia. Uh, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, nation building is a process or way to develop and improve the ability of a country to function perfectly. In addition, nation building is building or managing a national identity by using state power, which aims to unite the people within the country so that it remains politically stable and cast and can last in the long term. Every country, both developing and developed, never stop improving its ability to protect and serve the people. Each country will continue to process and change and adapt to times and circumstances, both, of, both at domestic and international levels. In the nation building process, human development is a major element. Therefore, the role of a leader is very important in fostering awareness and strengthening the sense of nationality among citizens. 
Dr. Muhammad Nasir is an example of one of the founding figures of the Indonesian nation who built national awareness through the effort of education, politics, and preaching Islamic, Islam preaching the Awa Islamia. Brothers and sisters, Indonesians telling to the beginning of independence. In the mid of the 20th century, when Indonesia became independent in 1945, uh, Indonesia's population was around 61 million. As new pluralistic country, Indonesia was uh, faces a big challenge because its territory consists of not, not less than uh, 17,000 islands and its people come from uh, 300 ethnic groups who speak not less than 600 regional languages. The main challenge of Indonesia's nation building at the beginning of the independence of Indonesia was maintaining territorial integrity and sovereignty. Therefore, the form of unitary state of the Republic of Indonesia, NKRI, was chosen to maintain territorial integrity of Indonesia. Indonesia has experienced being a federal state, namely the Republic of Indonesia United, Greece, which is easily provoked by foreign colonial nations to divide between uh, the states. Ideologically, Indonesian independence was strongly supported by national awareness among its elite leaders especially those leading a local youth organization. On 27 to 28 October of 1928, the Youth Congress was held, which was initiated by youth organizations throughout the archipelage. At the end of the Congress, a youth pledge was agreed which affirmed the ideals of one motherland Indonesia and one nation Indonesia and upholding the United Language Indonesian language. The awareness of the homeland, nation, and language of unity as a valuable asset for nation building, especially since it was agreed, agreed long before the Indonesian became politically independent. Young Muhammad Nasir became chairman of the Bandung brand of the Young Islamic Bond in 1928 into 1932. And Young Islamic Bond is one, was one of the youth organization actively involved in the Youth Congress in Jakarta. Nasir's other colleagues who were active in the Youth Congress were Muhammad Rom and Kasman Singwadi Major, who showed the Muslim figures played a very big role in the formulation of the ideology of the Indonesian nation in collaboration with nationalist and traditionalist figures. And about the nation building uh, via educational path, we know well that the Nasir contribution was recognized at the national level for Indonesian people and influenced relations with the nation in the 1915s. Nasir embodies the, the ideal of nationality from thought to concrete action. He believes that there are parallels with the religious values, nationality, and humanity. Therefore, the, he applies Islamic idealism as a political rhetoric and character and persona, social and statehood life as well. And about his uh, role in, uh, in national building, yeah, educational path, I think uh, many papers was. Uh, before. Then I would like to uh, jump to the another topic. It's about national building via political path. In 1938, Nasir joined the Indonesian Islamic Party and was appointed head of the Bandung brand from 1940 to 1942. During the Japanese occupation, he joined with Islamic leaders who took the initiative to establish the highest Indonesian council. Then Cheng became the Indonesian Muslim Consultative Council or Mashumi. Nasir was appointed as one of the leaders of Mashumi from 1945 until when Mashumi and the Indonesian Socialist Party were dissolved by President Sukarno in 1960. His 22 years of service as a politician and sanctioned Nasir's character as a democrat and at the same time influenced, influenced the national political constellation with democratic values in line with the principle of Islam and Pancasila, the five the pillars of Indonesian ideology, as the basis of the Republic of Indonesia. The fourth as per, uh, precept of Pancasila, the fifth principle, states specially about democracy, which is formulated as democracy is led by the wisdom and deliberation representation. The practice of democracy in Indonesia is described under the contra of wisdom inside. This is like the concept of police, city state in Plato's and Aristotle's thought, where a city or region is led by intellectuals. It is not a democracy that tends to an anarchy because each person or group want to win alone and all kind of Machiavellian waste, Machiavellian, Machiavellian waste. Nor it 
practice it, a democracy controlled by a handful of elites who have abundant wealth, plutocracy, and can buy anything, including people's food and judge decision. Democracy, which is led, led by intellectual, put forward the method of deliberation in representative of its institution, not aimless debate. Representative of the people must increase the, their capacity to deliberate and debate alternative policies for the benefit, the, the benefit of the people. This is where it is placed whether, whether members of parliament or political parties truly understand and fight for the aspiration for the people they represent. After the proclamation of independence, Vice President Mohammed Hatta issued an edict date number three, uh, the three of November. 1945, which in, encouraged the formation of political parties as part of stabilize, stabilize, stabilizing the democracy. The edict was issued as in response to a, pro, to a proposal by an AP working body to the government. Islamic figures from various organizations at the time came together to form an Islamic political party, including Agus Salim, Sukisman, Wira Sanjaya, Wahid Hashim, and others. Thus, a committee was formed for the Indonesian Muslim Ummah Congress, which was held for the first time after independence on 7 to 8 November 1945 in Yogyakarta. The Congress committee is chaired by Muhammad Nasir, who is still relatively, rel relatively young, but highly trusted, where the committee members are senior figures. At a, re at, at a re relatively young age, Nasir was trusted to be one of the central administrators of the Mashumi Party. Because of his important position, Nasir was appointed as a member of the working body of the Central Education National Committee in, in 1945 and 1965. He was appointed uh, the Minister of Information on, of the Republic of Indonesia in Shahri's uh, second cabinet, and Shahri's third cabinet, and Hatta cabinet uh, number one. Nasir's role in putting the work mechanism of the Indonesian Ministry of Information was very prominent, especially in spreading the, the news of Indonesian independence and building communication between government, government units in times of the emergency condition. And uh, in fact, according to uh, Mr. Mahmoud Hatta, at the time, the president, uh, Mr. Bung Karno, did not want to set a government formation if it was not comp compiled by Brother Muhammad Nasir. His position as a chairman of the Islamic party, Mashumi, didn't limit his uh, interaction with national figures from various backgrounds. He believes that the path of dialogue and deliberation will solve many national problems. Historic record, his uh, historic record, his very bold initiative to submit the integration bill, uh, the, the 3rd of April 1950, to the parliament and the constituent to end the era of the Federal Republic of Indonesia toward the unitary state of the Republic of Indonesia. All of the historic achievements were pursued through dialogue with regional leaders who led the uh, uh, re states, uh, the Federal Republic of Indonesia, not by coercion uh, or political pressure. He collected support from all national faction, including Catholic and Christian parties. Nasir has good relationship with Catholic Ignatius Joseph, Joseph Casimo and Christian leaders as, such as Johan Slemina. Soon after the bill has been approved by the constitu uh, cons con constituent and by the government, Nasir was assigned as Prime Minister by Sukarno as the President of the Unitary State of Republic of Indonesia. Priority for the Republic of Indonesia has become his main obsession in maintaining national unity and integrity at all costs. However, Nasir chose a path of dialogue and built an agreement with all parties with different views because different views because he believed that our nation with our nation figures wanted to see a united and prosperous Indonesia. As also persuaded Islamic figures who led the exile government of the Republic of Indonesia in 1948 and 1949, or the Daru Islam resistance in 1949 till 1962 to give, to give up sovereignty and return to the Republic of Indonesia. It becomes an internal monument on how to build the palace of national building in theory and practice. National building the, uh, through the Dawah path. National building effort, national building effort faced challenges not only from external foreign powers that want to divide and colonize a nation, but also from an internal aspect, namely differences in views among the driving figures. 
curing the galley. Excuse me, Dr. Hidayat. Yeah. Okay, uh, one minute. Your, one minute, your time, your time, five, five minutes more. Okay, thank you very much. So, just uh, minutes, minutes, just minutes. Okay, five minutes, okay. Then I would like to say that um, um, uh, Dr. Dr. Muhammad Nasir was involved in the opposition against Sukarno's increasingly authoritarian government and eventually joined the revolutionary government of the Republic of Indonesia after leaving Java. And by PRRE, uh, which demand greater regional autonomy, was misinterpreted by Sukarno as a rebellion. As a result, Nasir was arrested and imprisoned in Malang from 1962 to 1964 and was released, released during the new order, new order era on July uh, uh, 1966. After being released from the prison, Nasir was again involved in Islamic organization. After long service in, as a politician and public official, he founded and led the Islamic preaching organization. It is uh, Dewan Dawah Islam Indonesia. Nasir died uh, uh, in the uh, 26th of February, 1967. Uh, uh, Nasir Dawah activities were not only in Indonesia, but received the trust of foreign countries in such as Majestasi Surabit al Islami Islami and Majlis al 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 Masajid based in Mecca, and the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies in the, in the in UK, and the World Muslim Congress in Karachi, Pakistan. Nasir legacy includes modern Islamic thoughts and democratic political Islam and in pluralistic nation, the biggest Muslim country in the world. Um, the different the, the different political views between Muhammad Nasir, I, I, I mean, during the early days of the new order, he was credited with sending a note to Tunku Abdurrahman in Malaysia in order to reopen relations with Malaysia and Indonesia. In addition, he was also one who contacts the Kuwait government to invest in Indonesia and, and convince the Japanese government of the new order's seriousness in developing the country. The difference in political views between Muhammad Nasi and Suharto didn't pre prevent him from contributing to, save, to saving Indonesia from the political and economic crisis at the start of the new, uh, and the new order, but he used his uh, Islamic influence to contact Malaysia and Kuwait. Nasir mobilized all his potential and connection with the outset world to build international trust to the Indonesian government. In fact, he fell off often experiences political pressure. It's amazing that no politician is no politician is willing and able to make such sacrifice, except for the for those who are guided by sincerity and loyalty for the Republic of Indonesia because of the Islamic teaching he understands. Thanks to Dr. Mahmoud Nasir, preaching program and guidance, especially in well-known university campuses in Indonesia, a generation has emerged who have an awareness of democracy and demand change. However, preaching takes a long time to bring up about change. After 32 years in power, President Suharto finally stepped down in 1998 through the reform movement power. President uh, and, uh, uh, reform movement organiz organized by students and critical groups. One of the important components of the 1998 reform movement was activists of the Islamic Critics Association in campus, Lembaga Dawah Campus, which was, it, it was, it was none, none other than the work of Nasir and his friend in, forest, in fostering the younger, the younger generation. Nasir has succeeded in carrying in carrying out a regulation process in terms of democratic thinking and behavior while maintaining national integrity and integration by this underst good understanding of Islamic teaching. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad Nasir, for all of his uh, effort. And Indonesian government offer him the national hearing now at uh, 10 of November 2008. That is the lift journey and struggle of Dr. Muhammad Nasir in, in realizing Indonesia different independent and strengthening national building by uh, the, the three important paths, uh, politically and, and educationally and uh, Islamically or Islamic preaching that has been taken by Panasi in the field of education, politics and da'wah are an inspiration or a very good inspiration for the next generation. The current condition of contemporary Indonesia shows that Muslim and Islamic organization and Islamic political organization are facing political phrases. History seems to repeat itself. 
Dr. Muhammad Nasir prescription for maintaining the integrity of Islam parties in the arena of democracy and maintaining nationalism spirit is still very relevant till it relation with another nation. And thank you very much. Wajazakumullah khairan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah Ustaz Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. Now we come to Dr. Fadli Zon with the topic of Islam and democracy Muhammad Nasir political thought. Alhamdulillah Dr. Fadli Zon has joined us and your time 15 minutes. Dr. Fadli Zon. Hello? Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, moderator, the chair, Bapak Henry Tanjung. In this opportunity, I would like to share my views about Islam and democracy as the reflection on the views of Muhammad Natsir. Natsir was born, of course, we all know, in Minangkabau, Alahan Panjang, West Sumatra on the 17, 1908. And as a Muslim statesman and ulama and a scholar, he is often ambiguously judged by the Western scholars on Indonesian studies as a figure of democratic thinker, an excellent administrative leader alongside with Muhammad Hatta and Sultan Sahril. The work of Audrey Kahin in 2012 titled Islam, Nationalism, and Democracy, a political biography of Muhammad Natsir, commended Natsir's persistent opposition against the increasingly uncontrollable chaos in the government under Sukarno's leadership, but also admired Natsir as a bright intellectual whose political and religious beliefs are somewhat strict. Natsir was relentless in his efforts to promote Islam to be adopted as the national ideology which substituted Pancasila. Natsir's determination had painted him as someone who shared the belief of Cartus Wirio as well as other figures of Darul Islam. Certainly, this judgment was false since Natsir Resulat in championing Islamism in the assembly and his supposed objection against Pancasila during the period was in fact an expression of resisting the growing influence of communism which dominated Indonesia at the time. If we trace back to the past, Nasir activism life started when he pursued further education in Mulo in 1923. After his graduation, he moved to Bandung, West Java and continued studying at the AMS, this is like high school, and finished in 1930. So in AMS, Natsir became chairperson of Young Islamic in Bonn, Bandung, a pioneer of, in Islamic youth movement in the early 20th century. So he is, he also established an Islamic education institution in Bandung, which attempted to blend Islamic education and secular curricula. The growth of ideology based politics in the post-independence era encouraged Natsir to promote Islamic ideology through such constitutional platform. This practice was brought about by instruction of the vice president on November 3rd, 1945, in which he directed and legitimized a multi-party system. So following the instruction, Indonesia then witnessed three ideological streams. Literary uh, Ali Ran yeah, sprang in its political sphere Islam, nationalism, and communism. It was also one other stream, social democracy, that rose in early days of independence. Given the absence of Islamic representation in the formal political system, Natsir was then motivated to organize Muslim Congress in Yogyakarta, November 7, 8, 1945 attended by various Islamic leaders and organization representatives, the Congress agreed to establish Mashumi Party or Indonesian Muslim Assembly as the sole party to voice the political aspiration of the Indonesian Muslims. As a polyglot skilled in English, Arabic, Dutch, French, and Latin, Natsir had the tool to 
uh, the tool that he needed to explore the wealth of information the world had to offer. Herbert Fies, in his book, The Decline of Constitutional Democracy in Indonesia, in 1962, called Nasir as a democratic leader of the likes of Hatta and Shahrir. Instead of rejecting democracy, Nasir believed that it had to be aligned with the principles of Islam. Political parties and the state were the instruments through which Islamic values were upheld. Nasir believed that Islam is democratic in a sense that it is against tyranny, absolutism, and abuse of authority. Nevertheless, Islam was not purely a democracy, yet not entirely that dictatorial. According to Nasir, democracy had its weaknesses, among them one that was most notable and had been shown throughout history was its tendency to evolve into a particularcy or clickercy. He had also served various key positions in the government, from member of the Executive Committee of the Central Indonesian National Committee, Minister of Information, member of temporary House of Representatives, and of course, Prime Minister. Nazir's greatest contribution to Indonesia occurred after a speech he delivered on the April 3rd, 1950, before the Parliament of the Federated States of Indonesia, or Republic Indonesia Serikat, or United States of Indonesia, which invoked a motion now known as Mosti Integral Nazir. His speech also marked the dissolution of federal state engineered by the Dutch government and the rebirth of Indonesia as a unitary state. For his thoughts and action, historians often call Nasir as the second declarator of the Republic of Indonesia. It is interesting to discuss that in the 1940, Nasir was involved in a series of arguments with Sukarno about re the relation between religion and the state. Their view contrasted as Sukarno argued that religion must be separated from the state, while Nasir contended that separation was not possible. When Mashumi was founded on November 7, 1945, until the 1955 general elections, Nasir was a supporter of Pancasila. However, from 1956 to 1961, Nasir supported Islam as the state ideology. In general, he urged Muslims to stop confronting Pancasila with Islam. Nasir believed in Islam as a philosophy of state, philosophy of life that guided its followers, the Muslims, on the system in life, including in politics. As a Muslim politician, Nasir only admitted that it would be impossible for him to dispose that philosophy. Nevertheless, Nasir realized that the Holy Quran and Sunnah alone could not ensure the adherence of humankind to Islam. For Nasir, religion and the state were inseparable. He further believed that Indonesian nationalism should be Islamic nationalism, which was consistent with his view on Islam as a national philosophy and an ideology. To quote Nasir's favorite thinker, Montgomery Ward, Islam is more than a religion, it is a complete civilization. This religion becomes a, the foundation of state life that concerns both its people and rulers' behaviors. That is why Sharia in Islam is inherent. The Quran and the Sunnah provide Sharia, while the state strengthens it. In this case, religion needs the state because the presence of a state allows religion to flourish. Conversely, the state also needs religion because religion provides the ethical and moral spiritual guidance that support its growth. To this end, Nasir clearly referred to President Sukarno's speech on June 15, 1954 at a Pancasila Defender Movement's meeting at the State Palace. In the speech, Sukarno suggested that the principle of one supreme God was created by man, which mean which man that God's existence depended on humans. God might be and might not exist. Deliberately or not, Sukarno's elaboration indicated his attempt to separate the principle from its connection with religion. The need to cut off the ties between Pancasila and its religious interpretation was precisely what Nasir rejected. Nasir's rejection 
at a time was understandable because efforts to keep Pancasila away from religious interpretation were not only carried out by secular nationalists, but also by the communists who had never accepted Pancasila. Sukarno's Pancasila formulation, for example, put the belief in God principle plus. In the ratified version, the principle was replaced with one supreme God and became the first principle in Pancasila. Nazi's view of Pancasila was very much in line with that of Muhammad Hatta. According to Hatta, Pancasila consisted of two layers of foundation, the moral foundation and the political foundation. With this recognition, people must start being mindful. Different religions may exist in Indonesia, but they differed only in their rituals. Meanwhile, their deeds were similar, upholding truth, justice, virtue, and honesty to protect the nation. So I would like to highlight that Nazi rejection of Pancasila in 1957 was not a rejection of Pancasila itself. It must be understood as rejection towards a historical secularist interpretation of Pancasila, which happened, which happened to be the mainstream in Indonesian politics after the rise of communist group in 1950s. The nationalist group are... Excuse me, your time, five minutes more. Okay. The nationalist group, for example, was heavily influenced by the attitude of communists. Moreover, politically, President Sukarno himself at the time appeared to be closer and trust the PKI or the Indonesian Communist Party leaders more than the PNI leaders, despite the fact that he founded and set ideology of PNI or the nationalists. Then Nazi reached the peak of his political power in 1951 when he was appointed as the Prime Minister of the Republic of Indonesia in the post-revolution first cabinet. His achievement was due to the success of Mosi Integral, coined by Nasir to reunite Indonesia's territories previously divided into several federation countries by the Dutch. Following the success of Mosi Integral, Asa Bafagi, a journalist from Harian Merdeka, asked President Sukarno about the person who would be appointed prime minister. Sukarno firmly replied, none other than Natsir from Ashumi. They have the conception to save the republic through the constitution. Through Mosh Integral, Nasir gained the support from various political groups along the right and left wings. The fact that Insinyur Sukirman, a figure from the Communist Party, was willing to sign the motion gave Nasir considerable political credit. He managed to persuade the members of DPR from the Federated States of Indonesia and state officials to turn the unitary state of the Republic of Indonesia, as one proclaimed 17 August 1945. So the acceptance showed that Nasir's political idea was able to break down the barriers of political streams. Nasir mostly integral pushed Sukarno to reproclaim NKRI or the unitary state of the Republic of Indonesia, August 17, 1950. In conclusion, in expressing Islamism, Nasir was distinct from Kartos Wirjo and other Darul Islam figures. He was the bridge that returned and accepted Darul Islam figures to the Republic. Hence, judging Nasir from the DITEE, the Darul Islam incident perspective would be in inaccurate. The silver lining would be Pancasila can be a unifying philosophy if it continues to be based on Islam, Indonesia's largest component. Last but not least, I believe that Nazi's idea was brought throughout his political career and dakwah is still relevant to discuss and further respond to the current political juncture in our world. Thank you very much and I look forward for further hearing from your thoughts and views in this matter. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah Dr. Fadlizon. Very clear and very uh, nationalistic about the personality of the Dr. Muhammad Nasir. Thank you very much again. And now we come to Dr. Sajjad Ahmad Padi from Aligarh Muslim University. He got doctorate from the uh, Department of Islamic Studies. And his topic is perfect, uh, perfectness 
of nation building and visiting in the personalities of Dr. Muhammad Nasir and Abul Kalam Azad a study Dr. Sajad Ahmad Padi Allah unfortunately uh, the camera of uh, my laptop is not working properly I apologize for that I think it is important to visualize my PowerPoint presentation instead of visualizing my face so I am sharing my power presentation with you yes yes Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Make it make it uh, full. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So th thank you very much for both iOS and the organizers from the Indonesia who gave me a chance to present my submissions before you. So start with uh, uh, nation building. Actually, the nation building, uh, what it means, it means actually the constructing and structuring the identities and which are actually the step for the stability and viability okay. of, of nations, which uh, uh, we can see in the progressions like economic development, political stability, <laughs> health equipment facilities, and education development. And uh, my topic is actually the uh, uh, nation building under the paradigm of educational development for both these uh, scholars, actually they are both uh, nationalist scholars, they uh, are the key rollers in uh, leading their uh, countries for freedom. Uh, and this education, uh, when we talk about it, is actually the uh, harmonious, uh, to bring a harmonious society, which includes different scholars, scientists, engineers, politicians, bureaucrats. And these are the two persons uh, on the left side, it's uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir and on the right side is Abdul Kalam Azad. So far, <clears throat> uh, uh, from the, since from the morning, there have been a lot of uh, uh, talking about the life of uh, Muhammad Nasir. So I, I will seek that portion. I will just put your attention for the, some key pointers towards what, uh, what is common between the Nasir and Azad's life. So there, the links between them, the common links between them are the influence of the modernist scholars like uh, Jamaluddin Afghani, Ubdu and Reza, which is actually uh, a link of a uh, journal uh, that's Almanar. Both of them, both personalities, uh, they are very much influenced by this journal, the revolutionary, uh, the revolution and revolutionist uh, journal Almanar, we can say. And they both propagated religious as well as secular knowledge both uh, to lead them together. And uh, for the Indonesian uh, participants, I will just a uh, few points about the Abdul Kalam Azad because uh, it is an Indian scholar who was born in Mecca and then they migrated to uh, uh, India. He was a nationalist leader uh, and educationist and Mufassir. He also uh, wrote a tafsir that's Tarjuman al-Quran. And he was a leading figure in the freedom struggle uh, for independence of, uh, uh, against the British rule. And uh, to move onwards, I would say that uh, some uh, common uh, points between the Abdul Kalam Azad and the Muhammad uh, Nasir, they both faced the colonialism of, uh, we can say, uh, India was facing under the colonial rule of uh, British imperialism and, uh, the, um, and the Indonesia was facing Dutch colonial uh, period. So both of them witnessed this colonial era as well as the independent era after the liberation of both these countries. So there are very much influence about uh, this uh, uh, colonial period as well as the independence. And after independence, both of them came uh, uh, became the key figures in the administration also. As we, uh, we can say that uh, Azad was the first education minister of independent India and uh, Muhammad Nasir also had a key uh, position after uh, liberation of Indonesia. So the, the influence of Dutch colonial period, the educational, as we know that their education system was based on Western. So Muhammad Nasir, they, he did not critique Western education in such a way, but he was actually critique about their uh, only to promote secular uh, subjects. He said that uh, if we take religious subjects and secular subjects together, then I don't have any problem with the Western education system. And he says that uh, he became a mediator between the uh, two groups of people, one who uh, came from the uh, Western countries, who studied from Western, and the other who studied in Eastern Muslim countries. He became a bridge between them. He tried to collaborate them. He says that education is not judged 
with geographical locations and education uh, is it is beyond the uh, this geographical boundaries and uh, concentrations uh, and he promoted the knowledge to promote justice and betterment he says that uh, the uh, god it is not belonging to any east or west god belongs to all so we don't uh, need to differentiate between the education uh, education systems uh, and he says that there are negative and positive aspects also for both systems if we talk about western system or eastern system they are uh, full of negativity and also a positivity so we should take the positive things from west and uh, neglect their negative aspects he says that the actual difference between is uh, truth that's al haq and the false al batil so it uh, can be uh, said that he says that uh, if a person he is a muslim or he belong to a muslim country if he says truth we should accept if he uh, said uh, says anything which is false or batil that should be also rejected uh, he actually want to bring a human civilization which will be based on intact intellectualism uh, and ra rationality he says that the journey of maka has also a background that we uh, uh, where we uh, met different ethnic and uh, ethnic groups and racial uh, different races and different caste systems that is a, a bonus point for the muslims they get acquainted with the other races also the uh, the uh, western uh, and the education he wants to uh, promote the education that would be a balanced approach which would be balanced from physical as well as spiritual aspects in both uh, these terms he wants to develop the ummah uh, by making the proper planning of the education and for the education development he was uh, himself well versed in both religious sciences as well as worldly knowledge such as uh, psychology and western philosophy also he says the main aim of the educational aim is the main objective of the education is uh, god's pleasure and it to know god and the sciences is also helping uh, in in discovering the universe and in uh, by using the reason to uh, promote uh, self self uh, individuality that would uh, help you to uh, uh, to uh, make a bonding to make a composite bond, bonding between uh, allah and uh, his creations so uh, to know universe you would uh, ultimately know your god so um, he was uh, uh, he was actually taking umma towards uh, critical thinking uh, he says that we don't need uh, much people who will only memorize the quranic text we actually need the people who will analyt analytically uh, analytically who will summarize the uh, what uh, the message of the quran is and what what uh, quran uh, instead of yes uh, promo instead of memorizing it we should uh, analyze it in a deeper way and he says that the purpose of a human being uh, to make a, which education made him is the uh, to serve allah and which is based on the concept of tauhid so he was uh, a tauhidi scholar and he leads his uh, entities and muslim people to uh, be firm in tauhid and as far as azad is concerned azad <coughs> was also a nationalist uh, preacher and also remained the education minister of Educa uh, education minister of independent india he has no so uh, formal schooling as his father uh, um, namely khairuddin ahmed had no faith in the western education so uh, whatever azad uh, gained in this field he himself acquainted with certain scholars and uh, promoted his uh, education thought in western philosophy and other western secular sciences so education thought uh, his education thought is based on the metaphysical dimension which is an inner faith of a man in the divine existence he says that the responsibility of man towards god is to have faith in his attributes and towards universe aimed at transformation of man's personality by enjoining virtues and forbidding vices he says that human beings inherited the qualities of god as being his vicegerent and azad was the architect of we can say modern education system of india especially in, uh, in 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 indian context we can say about among muslims he was a modern architect of modern education he was acquainted with 
both modern as well as traditional form of education. He sought for a learning society through liberal, modern, and universal education. He wants to combine the Indian arts and rationalism of Western sciences. He was of the view that religion and science are not contradictory, rather helps in understanding the nature of universe and the religion, the secrets of universe. He was deeply impressed by the advances made in the West in the realm of elementary education for uh, children. Azad was impressed, uh, he, impressed by the French philosopher Rousseau and agreed his advocacy of child necessity and ability to grasp the truth through his own sight. He believed that to serve the purpose of medium of instruction, the provincial needs to be the provincial language needs to be developed. Azad found the curriculum in the Islamic madrasas uh, fundamentally narrow, with a significant omission of mathematics, uh, which is the basic uh, uh, basics of science and technology. Uh, and after being eleven years in the ministry, Azad uh, made some progressive yeah. changes. Excuse me, Sajjad, you have five minutes more. Okay, thank you. Uh, he made some progressive changes in the history of education development of India. Some important developments, uh, we can say, uh, his Im important developments such as he made the University Education Commission in 1948, Secondary Education Commission in 1952, All Indian Council for Technical Education, establishment of numerous laboratories of scientific research, established University Grants Commission with, consi with considerable financial resources in 1956. He, uh, and one more important uh, uh, thing in Azad's uh, journey, which is uh, something uh, unique in its existence, that he equally gave importance to women education as they are the citizens of free India as men. And, uh, and towards this women education, I didn't find anything about Muhammad Nasir uh, that he uh, worked in this field. So it is unique in Azad's stance that he, uh, he moved uh, uh, a foot uh, onwards that he gave equal importance to women education. He also, he was, uh, he was of the view that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged his companions to give knowledge from all possible ways, all possible sources. He believed that modern sciences are not contradictory with Islam and uh, doesn't lead to atheism. Azad also emphasizes on uh, culture and her uh, heritage of uh, education is complete. He says that uh, in complete at all levels, without art, culture and music, it is not the education is not complete. And this another thing which is distinguished uh, Azad from Muhammad Nasir is that he promoted uh, music also, uh, uh, music and arts and culture of India also which uh, I don't find Muhammad Nasir uh, did something in this field. So to conclude my presentation, I would say that uh, the common, the common, common uh, things which uh, these personalities highlighted that uh, both faced uh, the colonial period of uh, British and Dutch uh, respectively, and both were well-versed in Western as well as Islamic uh, education system. And both of them promoted science and reason with Islamic uh, ethics, Islamic language, and Islamic culture, and uh, uh, some uh, uh, distinguished uh, things which are between them, as uh, I uh, talked before, that women education, Azad promoted women education, music, culture, etc. But uh, Muhammad Nasir didn't do anything in that field. Thank you very much. All right, Jazakallah, Dr. Sajjad Ahmad Pade. Uh, to all participants and audience, uh, audiences, uh, after the last presentation by Ms. Hes Kasanas, we have 15 minutes uh, to 30 minutes about the question and answer session. Uh, if you want to uh, ask uh, any question, just write down in the key and A in the, in the bottom of the uh, screen there is key and a okay so just write down your question and i will read it and i will address to the speakers okay now i call miss Hes, uh, K. hassan nas is a uh, islamic scholar researchers sorry 
Oke, okay, kesan last. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> ya, yeah. uh, from Department of Islamic Studies, Aligarh Muslim University, on topic on Dr. Muhammad Nasir perspective to Islamic culture. Now, we are discussing Islamic culture. Kesaf, uh, ke Hasan, uh, Nas. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Respected chairperson, Assalamu alaikum and ladies and gentlemen. First of all, introduce my presentation topic, Dr. Muhammad Nasir's perspective to Islamic culture and Indonesia. Firstly, I would like to brief introduction. Muhammad Nasir was an Islamic scholar, social reformer, public servant, statements, and intellectual Muslim representative and lecturer. He was not only a dominant figure in the struggle against occupation in Indonesia, but also one of the prominent of the superior modern Islamic movement in that country. Dr. Nasir was extremely admired in international Islamic world for his knowledge, understanding and views, as well as his role in the fight in opposition to career. He worked as a teacher, lecturer, and manager during the years of Dutch of his country. He connected anti-colonial try in 1945. He became a member of the Indonesian parliament founded Masjumi, the Council of Muslim Associations of Indonesia in 1946, and was a minister of information for four years during his contemporary commitment presented in opposition motion to turn Indonesia into an organization and supported the unity of the Republic. Dr. Nasir was given the prize for his extremely represented in part in the international Islamic world for his knowledge, understanding and dialogues as well as for the part in fight of start in Indonesia and in countervailing and Islamic practices and reformer currents. Under the banner of Back to the Quran and Sunnah, which indicate the beginning of an opening to region istihad and scientific inquiry, there, was, there has been an occurring move in few primary beliefs of Islam. This movement represents through the redirection of the Islamic movement in Indonesia since the 1930s. This paper tried to study about Muhammad Nasir's thoughts of to Islamic culture and Indonesia. Muhammad Nasir was a young intellectual who was head of an Islamic school and Muhammad Nasir was a young intellectual and also leader of the Muslim Youth Association. Wrote an article entitled Islam Dan Kebu Dayan, Islam and Culture in Pedometry Masayarakat, which was later reproduced is his capital selector Nasir quoted from Gibbs' book, whether Islam to the effect that Islam is indeed much more than a system of theology, it is a complete civilization. Nasir used this as an introductory quotation to address the theme of a culture of great historical importance, which he referred to as Islamic culture. Now I will, now I would like this because his works Nasir was a prominent thinker who regularly performed for the development of the Indonesian people's otherworldly and meaningfully life. He did not only by way of his motivational speeches, discussions, and his empirical activities, but also good writings, like his contemporary Islamic scholar Sayyid Abdullah Maududi, who was actively involved in communicating his Islamic ideas in his 20. Nasir also began writing on Islam and politics in Bhasha, Indonesia and Dutch when he was still a high school student. He could speak several languages besides Nasir had done master seven languages, namely Dutch, English, Arabic, French, German, Latin, and Esperanto. He has left behind no less than 45 books and articles dealing with several subjects on Islam. When Professor Ajib Rosidi, foreign language, University of Osaka, um, Japan, he is saying about Mohammed Nasir's writing, that Nazis' writings are not only important in terms of documentations or historical records, 
but also give a guidance towards the steps that will be taken by the later generations. Now, I would like to emphasize Nazis' points of view towards Islamic culture. In the late 1930s, Nazi wrote about the spirit of scientific evaluation in Islam and inspired Muslims to question the truth Islam introduced in its disciples. Nazis mainly pointed to conclude that within Islamic culture, the process of evaluation and research is not restricted to what can be dropped from the orthodox highly sciences such as Islamic jurisprudence, ilmul fika, logic, ilmul kalam, and mysticism, ilmul tasawwu. He highlighted Islamic culture from the 9th to the 13th century, granted in the uh, training of what in, is now known as the modern sciences, example, such uh, economics, political science, sociology, the med medical sciences, and physics, natural sciences. Nazis' beliefs to Islam and its thoughts in his writing lighted the fact that Indonesian Muslims were unaware of common worldview. In the 1930s, their different Muslim social groups holding different worldviews could be indicated. First, there were Muslims whose thinking on life was joined by traditional religious instruction or education as reflected in the traditional religious sciences logic, Islamic jurisprudence, and mysticism. And there were also Muslims whose opinion believed a Western education. Finally, third group of individuals within the Muslim community whose point of view was outlined by the philosophy of Orthodox culture. There is a tolerable controversy over whether there is or not an Islamic culture or whether it is mandatory or not to accurate a culture within the brand of Islam on it. And then observe it safer to use the term Muslim culture, respectively Islamic culture, Ahmad Bhai has the same opinion like Endego to Wahib, describing Islam to a social system or subsystem as per, for example, Islamic government system, Islamic economic system, or the Islamic concept of social justice. As such, Islamization efforts are basic things of the mind of individual Muslim or a group of Muslims. In his thinking, the creation of a social system or subsystem is likely to such space and time and depends on the use of man-made science in that specific sphere of effect of space and time. The belief that there is an Islamic concept of a social system means giving a religious character to something that is non-religious, spreading differences and transcendentalizing matters that are actually immense. Now I would like to conclude my topic. It appears that further development in Indonesia will be influenced by two factors. Was the constant hearing of four Islamic values for which, since former times, such prominent figures as Nasir have made an appeal. Second, critical awareness of developments in the modern world, which is perceived to be going through to process of structural deformation. Muhammad Nasir's opinion of Islamic culture is understandably reviewed in numbers of chances and events. According to him, Islam as a religion does not only lessen the question of de devotion, but also support the several proportions of human life that are wonderfully organized in Islamic teachings with the fundamental instrument instruction of the Quran. Consequently, political life, social life, economics, culture, and so on cannot be distinguished from the laws of Allah. He conducted that religion and politics are not difference, are not difference because politics is also part of worship. This type of site decorated that religion should also color of the life of country. Therefore, Islam is a perfect religion that does not separate religion from the country. It is undeniable that Muhammad Nasir was the great supporter of the Islamic culture of Indonesia. Thank it you is so much. Uh, 
uh, your time is five minutes more. Please manage your time. She has finished her uh, this presentation. Now you can uh, go, Professor. You can go for questions. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, please go. Yeah, yeah. Are you saw in the QA, QA, question and answer session, so many questions. I just uh, choose the questions that um, are very relevant to this uh, topic. The mm -hmm. first question is to Dr. Nur Wahid and Dr. Fandizon. This is from Indonesia, from Sofwan Karim. The question is, what the positive point of Nasir thought? and his lesson learned for Indonesia recently, political and democracy phenomenon. And the second one from Hamidullah Marazi. I think this is for uh, Dr. Nur Wahid. Why Indonesian Muslims have always supported secular parties rather than parties with Islamic orientation? The Nahdat and Muhammadiyah couldn't provide alternative to secular politics? And the, uh, the other question, I think this uh, for uh, Dr. Fadizon. Do you think that Pancasila is against Islamic belief? There is good element of Tawhid and fellow feelings in these principles. And the other question uh, from Turkey. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much to all panelists and hosts and those sacrifice to this, uh, to this webinar. I got very wide perspective about the one of prominent Indonesian heroes, Mr. Muhammad Nasir. Can the panelists address what can be used and capitalized all the Mr. Nasir in thought and acts for building for today's Ummah problem? I think to collect and collaborate all of global Muslim figure and emphasize it today's global problems. I think uh, for this first session of QA and uh, Association, I think that's enough. Dr. Nur, Dr. Uh, Hidayat Nur Wahid, please. Thank you. And thank you for all uh, for the delivery of, of speech and for the answers. Uh, but uh, what is the positive uh, thing, about, uh, the positive point of the Dr. Muhammad Nasir thought for Indonesian uh, people and Muslim people in Indonesia? I think one of the very important thing is about uh, giving the fact, giving the yes, giving the fact and uh, clear data that actually there is no need to spirit between you as a Muslim and you as the Indonesian citizen. Uh, Dr. Mam Nasir give uh, give us the clearly fact that uh, yes, you become the Muslim and you become the Indonesian people. It tend to be practiced, and he practiced it very clearly and very well and very success in it. Therefore, uh, there is no need again uh, to make such the co uh, co uh, contradicting thing, as contradicting thing about uh, Islam as uh, ideology, Islam as thought, and Islam as practice, and the citizenship uh, to, to be practiced and democracy to be practiced. You can practice uh, democracy as Indonesian citizen, and you can, in the same time, practice Islamic uh, Sharia, Islamic thought, and Islamic uh, ideology. And this is what practiced by Dr. Muhammad Nasir, and he succeeded in practicing it, and especially in uh, coming with the unit, un, unitary of in, uh, the Republic of Indonesia, because before it uh, it was changed by the uh, Dutch colonial uh, colonialism as the uh, 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 not not again as uh, the uh, unitary state, but uh, as a federal state. Uh, I think uh, the the person that uh, struggled for it. Only the person that I understand well about the uh, the first of Al Quran wa tasimu bihabilai jamti awalat faraku and 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 at, uh, at the same time he understand well about uh, the unit of Indonesia democratically and as the purpose of Indonesian uh, independence. This is the the first uh, the first question I think. And the second one why the Indonesian people uh, the, uh, the majority of them uh, support the. Uh, Secular uh, political parties rather than the Islamic political parties. Yes. Yeah, actually, this is uh, another question from us also for our brothers in Indonesia, where they uh, it's actually not only practice in the uh, last decades, but uh, from the first beginning of the uh, uh, general election in Indonesia held in 1955, 
and in, and at the time there's uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasir as the leader of uh, Mashumi, uh, the Majishura Muslimin of Indonesia, the biggest political party at the time. Um, they, from that uh, first beginning of the national election, the majority of uh, Muslim uh, not give the uh, the food for the winning of Islamic political party. Yes, uh, the Majumi and Nahdlatul Ulama party uh, get uh, not less than uh, forty three uh, percent of uh, the vote, but uh, still the majority is uh, for National Indonesian Party. It's PNI led by Sukarno. Uh, actually, this is uh, another another challenge for Muslim uh, political party to, to to solve it, and uh, I, we hope that by the, uh, the, the long practice of democracy and by better understanding about the Islam uh, and its relation with the political activities, and also by the, the, uh, the better uh, practicing of, uh, uh, of uh, Indonesian Islamic political parties. We hope that uh, in the future there will be uh, the good uh, map of the, uh, the of, of the of the strength of the Islamic political party and 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 at the time uh, Muslim Ummah in Indonesia uh, can uh, foot and uh, suggesting the Islamic political party in Indonesia. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hidayat Nur, Hidayat Nur Wahid. Yeah, Dr. Muhammad Sidik, you want to uh, speak something? Yes, thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I would like to comment on the presentation by Dr. Sajad Ahmad Padi. Uh, he had made a very beautiful uh, presentation, uh, particularly on comparing the ideas and thinking of, of uh, Dr. Mohan Nasir and Dr. Kal Abdul Kalam Azad, both uh, Muslim leaders, uh, one uh, from Indonesia, Nasir, and Kalam Azad from Pakistan, from India. Uh, I think uh, uh, he has perhaps not had uh, the information about uh, the uh, attitude or policy of Dr. Mahathir about education, which he said missing in terms of including music or culture. I'd like to emphasize here, as I mentioned earlier also, that in that Yayasan Pendidikan Appendix school that he opened that started in Bandung, he did uh, try, he did combine the two stream of education, general science, included also uh, culture and music into the system of education with uh, Islamic studies. Uh, of course, this is the new at the time. Some people didn't agree to that, but uh, he did uh, have this aspect. Of, of course, not he was not advocating popular music, uh, but he was like a theory of uh, the music and all the aspects of that. Number two, I think he was also uh, commenting on the uh, role of education for women, which is, is I think, uh, if I remember correctly, he saw it was missing in terms of the, uh, in Indonesia, he said that Dr. Manasi didn't give enough attention. Uh, I think this is also another aspect which perhaps Dr. Sajad Ahmad Fadeh may have less information. Uh, or, or also perhaps because uh, this waste situation between Indonesia and India uh, is somewhat different in terms of women access and participation in education. I had the opportunity uh, to travel to many parts of India Maybe I think at least 15 states I visited when I was serving in Nepal, Kathmandu, uh, with the United Nations. And I saw there's a little a big gap of education with women and uh, male and female among the Muslims. But in Russia, this is very popular. Uh, from the beginning, access of women to education is, uh, almost, is almost equal, if I, may, if I don't say uh, equal, equal. In fact, in, in schools now, uh, there are more uh, girl students, and also they perform better in many schools than. Uh, the boys. So I think this is perhaps, uh, I'm sure Dr. Said Ahmed has read a lot, but maybe he, he missed this particular point. Okay, okay. And uh, okay. also about uh, the question which was raised by Dr. Safwan, uh, which was already answered by Dr. Hidal Wahid, I have one little point. I think the reason why is because uh, we have uh, Muslims in this in this generally I have less understanding about Islamic values. When they hear Sharia, something which they, they consider capital punishment. They consider uh, chopping of heads and chopping of hands as, as punishment, which is not true. You see, the first uh, uh, sharia is uh, iqra, that is instruction to read, which is a prerequisite for development and, and civilization. And then uh, there's so much things about health, about management, about efficiency, tabzir, there's so much uh, 
uh, rejected Islam. So all four things are not so much, I think, this misunderstood may, may, rather than uh, opposing. So they, they didn't uh, choose four Islamic parties, maybe because I believe because of uh, lack of understanding. So this is a role of uh, all the Muslims organization, including uh, Professor Safwan, which I know now he's the chairman of Ahmadiyya of West Sumatra after he was professor of economics at Andalas University. Uh, we should strengthen understanding of, of uh, Sharia. Sharia is now a word which is misunderstood. And therefore it is uh, Mazlum. Sharia word is Mazlum. Although now from bank Sharia banks now accepted before, it was- Excuse me, Brother Muhammad Siddiq. I have yeah, okay. so many questions. Thank this you. This complete. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks. This is a very, very important question from Dr. Umi Zakia, Brawijaya University. Ayo. This address to Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. Some basic consideration of Muhammad Nasir's point of views and thought on Islamic ways and democracy were due to the Muslim populations in the country and the way of life of Islam religion that he believed to be the most suitable to be implemented in terms of democracy within the government that he believe as well can reduce various problems in political sector and many other problems that might occur. However, it turned out that this kind of thought was not gained a fruitful result in Indonesia in political reform as Indonesian were one among many that has various tribes and religion, even though the majority is Muslim. Compared to Malaysia that has perhaps almost the same political and democracy situation, what then perhaps the reason and factors causing this? Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. Yeah, thank you for this um, uh, very uh, important and uh, very uh, critical uh, question. And actually, uh, Dr. Siddiq uh, gave, uh, gave uh, part of the answer. And I think another thing to be to talk here about uh, this condition is it's uh, uh, based also to uh, the, the practice of uh, 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 political actors in the parliament or in political organization because yes you know that uh, the, the, the majority of the political leaders or political uh, political actors are muslim whether they are in uh, secular political parties but uh, it's um, People find in the in the same time that uh, these people um, uh, maybe they gained the majority vote of Indonesian people, and by that they became the government, they become the the rule the, the ruling party, they become the uh, governor or the mayor, or become the members of the Indonesian parliament from national level to the local level. But uh, the same people they don't find what they what they want to be practiced. Because at the same time, uh, Dr. Mamadik talked before that the understanding of um, uh, Indonesian people, the Muslim political parties or the secular political parties from the Muslim Muslim people. Oops, there is a problem of silo. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, uh... and Islam. And yeah. it to be practiced in the uh, in the in, in the role. I, 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 by that, I want to say that uh, it is not the challenge actually for the uh, uh, Muslim political activist, activists and also for the uh, Muslim leaders in uh, maybe in Islamic political parties or in secular political parties to uh, in the future uh, to to give another proof to the Indonesian voters. Maybe they are Muslim, uh, Muslim activists or non-Muslim acti uh, activists that uh, by, 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 by the coming of the periods and by the coming of uh, some uh, 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 come and go as the, uh, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the ruling party or not ruling party, but they can also practice the better. Uh, they can uh, study from the uh, experiences uh, practiced before and by that they give another uh, good uh, a good, a, good, a, good, a good effort to become the better. This is the, the telling of the history and we hope that we can, uh, we can be in this telling also. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid. Now, uh, seven minutes left. I want to conclude this uh, session. Uh, from Dr. Hidayat Nur Wahid, he highlighted that Dr. Muhammad Nasir's contribution to nation building in Indonesia 
is to unite the Republic of Indonesia from federal, from federal. And Dr. Fadli Zon, Islam and Democracy, Muhammad Nasir political thought, Nasir believe that Islam is a democracy, but not as usual democracy, but Islamic nationalism. Islam is not only religion, it is a complete civilization. From Dr. Sajjad Ahmad Padi, Aligarh Muslim University, he uh, highlight the perfectness of nation building of Dr. Muhammad Nasir in terms of modifying curriculum of madrasa. And from Ms. He Hassan Nas uh, from Aligarh University, he highlight the role of uh, contribution of Muhammad Nasir to the culture of Islam. So I think the contribution of Dr. Muhammad Nasir not only in the nation buildings, but also in the democracy, in the education and culture. I think I conclude this uh, session and I will turn back to Professor uh, Wani. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Professor, and uh, I. Thank you, Professor, and I have to uh, just say we are grateful to all the participants and uh, resource persons and all friends, organizers, technical staff, uh, and then tomorrow we'll be again here according to Indian time at 10:30, and uh, that may be 12 according to the Indonesian time. Uh, so, inshallah. Tomorrow we'll be back uh, to the conference, to the next technical session, and uh, and accordingly, yeah, we'll proceed uh, with it and uh, then go into the second day of our this international conference. Wish a good time to all of you. So I said, according to Indian time, it will be 10:30, and according to Malaysian time, it may be 12. So. All know it and okay. Wish you time, we want to talk to all of you and have a good night. And one o'clock, one o'clock, Russian time, one o'clock, Indonesian time, with 12 o'clock. Uh -huh. Yeah, Malaysian time will be one o'clock, one, one p.m. Malaysian uh, okay, time, will be okay. one it will be, uh, yeah, according to Indian time, 10 30, and according to Indonesian time, it will be one. Well, yes, in Malaysian time, it's one o'clock. Okay, okay. So, accordingly, we'll go by that. So, God bless you all. Meeting, I mean, inshallah, tomorrow again. Meet, meet, meet. And then take it to the conclusion. And then we may proceed for other programs also in future. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah wa khaira dharen. Wa iyaakum. Amin. Wa iyaakum. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakumullah khair. Okay. The link will be the same. The Thank link will be the same you for tomorrow as well. Inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Inshallah. Inshallah. Inshallah.